Now I want you to no notice something interesting. This place is not watered. No, it isn't. I want you to come here because you're gonna eat this. You see the water. This, this is. I want you to start here because this is usually tough and stringy. Yeah, yeah. Start there and you way back and talk to us. Mm, it's very tender. It, it's tender like the top yeah. is that I usually yeah. buy. Would you would you cook that? No. Yeah. You know why you cook food? Oh, thank you. You know why you all cook food? Y'all. <laughs> For you in the South? Yeah. <laughs> you cook food because it's tough and you try to make it soft. Oh, it's amazing. And nothing, nothing should be tough. If you notice in the beginning of the garden, God didn't issue Adam and Eve a stove and refrigerator. You're laughing, but it's not funny. When you cook food, you kill enzymes. Big time. You should be eating everything fresh in season, pick and eat, raw, like everything in nature does. Nothing in nature cooks food. It's just humans who don't get it. Right. Because <laughs> we've been lied to. We've been lied to. Yeah, influence is a big deal. Mm -hmm. So you'll dig this up and re re Yeah, it yeah, see, see, I'm, I, I, have, I have asparagus beds, uh -huh. and so you'll, if you walk through, it's all over my orchard. Right. It's everywhere. This is the thing I'm finding, is this abundance can be a challenge. I'm telling you, I have so much abundance here, it is so hard to control. You see, you, you see, I prune my trees open. I want you to hear the language I'm using. I prune my trees open because I'm trying to reduce the amount of fruit I get. I'm trying, I'm making an effort to get less and it's not working. It's, it's usually it, the opposite. It's, and you know, I'm, I keep asking, could I get less please? And he's not being cooperative. It's just, it totally blows me out like, Really? Could I get less? And I'm doing everything I can to make that happen, but it's not happening. <laughs> because abundance is, is his only nature. All he does is multiply and he doesn't know anything else. And so that's, that's just what, what happens. Well, we're just about 2.30, so we'll get ready to start. Welcome. Glad you all could come. If you need water, if you walk up to the to, up my driveway, there's a black form under there right in front of the drinking fountain. If you brought water, I encourage you to dump it out because my water is come from the Glaciers the Olympics at 7.3 pH. It's really good water. Um, if you need to use a bathroom, if you just follow the road around the house, you come around the house and continue down, you'll see a, a, a wooden building with a green roof on the left-hand side. That's the restroom. You're welcome to, welcome to use it. Um, if you have questions, I really welcome them. They're never, in, they're never an interruption. If they should come, come to you, Please ask me because they're many, many times very beneficial and really helps me be on track. And so I really appreciate and thankful for your questions. So they're a real, a real blessing to me. Okay. Um, why I do this is that I've been gardening since I was five years old. Um, that was 68, um, 63 years ago. And only two years I missed is when I was in the Army. So for 60 years I've been gardening so I do have a perspective and I worked really hard to fail for a lot of those years I mean I was diligent I was had it one a garden I was into it but man I worked hard to fail really hard and it was very frustrating and then I moved up here and found I didn't have water and I asked the creator how I can grow food trees with water and he took me out to the woods he says come out to the woods I'll show you how to grow trees without water and it changed my life totally changed my life. I realized everything I was taught and been doing was stupid and didn't work. And when I saw how amazing the covering was, the covering is so significant in nature. If you look in nature, every living organism in nature has, has a protective covering. You see those dogs, they have fur. You know, we have skin. Birds have feathers. Fish have scales. And the soil is a living organism. And nowhere in nature where man hasn't been is the soil ever uncovered. Are you following me? Nowhere in nature where man hasn't been do you ever see exposed dirt. It only happens when man shows up and says, I'm going to tame this. I'm going to grow things. And the idiot, not realizing before he showed up, and was growing great, and he rips the cover off, and then now he has weeds, and he's killing himself and going backwards. He doesn't get it. He doesn't get it. And these farmers today, I mean, I feel so sorry for them. They're spending more and more each year to produce less and less. That's their reality. They spend more each year to produce less. And that's how they live. And they think it's okay. It's insanity. Total insanity. We're here under this environment. I do less and less each year and get more and more. 
I love it. It's so fun. It's just like, really? And every year my produce gets bigger and sweeter. I love that. Because God's not static. And the reason is, you see, is this material lays on the ground and it's composting. As water goes through it, it creates compost tea that feeds the soil. And what I'm seeing is more is going into the soil and the plants take out. And so every year, it gets better. It gets better. It gets better, non-ending. I had the most interesting conversation with the creator last year. I had arugula in my garden, you know, arugula. It doesn't get very big. It's not, suppo not, not supposed to, according to what you're told. But I had arugula in my garden. I had to take my tape measure. I couldn't believe it. I had arugula with leaves one foot long, four inches wide. Arugula. And I'm saying to the creator, what's up with this? You know what he told me? This isn't going to end. This is not going to end. It's awesome. It just keeps getting better because it can't help it. It's just so fun. And it's so encouraging. You feel like, ah, look at this. You know, it's just, it's so good. Anyway, we'll, we'll walk down. You're going to see some beets here. That's, you're going to see beets you've never in your life ever seen so big. The greens and the beet themselves, you know. And what I, what's amazing to me is last year they weren't that big. It's like every year it just keeps getting better and better and better. It's so cool. Now you see the space you're walking on here? I want you to, to notice as you walk on it, how buoyant it is under your feet. And I want you to notice what's out, out on top of it, all these cars. And this happens every week, and my wife's a midwife, and women come here for their prenatals. And this material cannot be compacted. It's impossible. Are you hearing me? Yeah. It can't be compacted. And what, what, I, what I discovered last year is that compacted soil is dead. When you take the covering off the ground, the soil compacts and it dies. It's huge. Where living soil can't be compacted. You can bend over with your hand, you can start moving that. Look, look at that with his foot, just effortlessly. This is that, and, and you see how quickly it's starting to get damp? Mm -hmm. See how there's moisture there? Wow. It's awesome. It's just so fun. And so the whole concept of preparing soil doesn't exist in a living environment. Soil never is prepared because it can't compact. So all you do is you get ready to plant, drop a seed in the ground, and they grow because they can't help it. It's vital. It's alive. When you take the cover off, that doesn't happen. So I want you, while you're here today, to anything you see you want to eat, enjoy. Because I, I, I really want you to experience what real food tastes like. Because it's really good. And you're going to find everything you eat will be sweet. I have nothing bitter. I asked the creator about bitter food because when, I, when the film first came out in 2011, I had a lot, it came out in, in August, and a lot of farmers coming here you know, from all over, the, all over the country, like in February, and all I had to offer them was kale and cilantro. And I got you know, hundreds of people coming, and, I'm, and they're all, they all say to me, how come this kale's not bitter? You know, I mean, these stems are usually bitter. How come this isn't? You know, I keep hearing this over and over again. I kind of sense I'm supposed to learn something. So I asked the creator. What he told me really was awesome. I want you to look at my body language. He says, when plants grow in compacted dead soil, ah, ah, they're struggling to live. And they're expressing in their flavor their bitterness. Did you hear me? They're expressing their bitterness. They're bitter because of how hard, how hard life was. Conversely, when plants go in nutrient-dense, loose soil, life's sweet. was easy. And it tastes that way because it was, wasn't hard. Nature's, nature's so real. I love it. No lies. <laughs> sweet life. Sounds analogous to people. Yep. Then I would assume that you're not bitter. I'm not. About your, your health issues? Not, you, know, you know why? Because I read the owner's manual. In the owner's manual, it gives us some very, very important instructions. It says, in everything, give thanks. You know what everything leaves out? Nothing. Nothing. Not and I'm so learning. The, you see, if I would whine and complain, oh, I can't walk, I can't do this. Life's a drag. You're just, because you are what you think. But when you say, yay God, thank you. I'm moving. We're still getting stuff done. This is good. This is awesome. And you know what this is doing? This is making me become more more understanding and, and um, considerate and compassionate. When I used, used not to be, so it's a good thing. 
This is awesome. And this is only temporary because I'm going to be traveling to the speed of thought forever. So this is yep. not going to last long. So, And eventually I think I'm going to get healed. So I'm good. <laughs> Do you ever give talks to youth groups about this? I think that would be a good thing. No, but you, you know, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't travel well, you know, and, and, oh, okay. um, and, but I would be glad to tell anybody. Be, but I'm just telling you, I've really learned from experience that the owner's manual is really significant. We, we, we need an owner's manual. We need help. And that book doesn't miss anything. It tells you how to deal with everything. It's so cool. Just for example, you know, how, you know the importance of gut flora in your stomach, how important gut flora is right. in your gut. How without it, you don't digest food, you just, you're not well. Right. You know the Bible talks about gut flora? It does? Yeah. In a very common passage that you don't connect the dots. Paul's writing to his son in the faith, Timothy, and he gives him some instru instruction. He says, Timothy, drink a little wine for your stomach's sake, gut flora, and you're off in infirmities. Timothy, you're sick all the time because you have no gut flora and you can't digest your food. And you're not getting nutrition from your food. If you drink a little wine, which establishes gut flora because it's fermented, right. you'll get nutrition from your food and you get well. I love the Bible, man. Nothing's missed. It's yeah. all there. It's awesome. I want to see how easy these yeah. come up. Oh, he's really oh, there, he is. there you got him. Not hard. Don't need a weed pooler or nothing. <laughs> now, 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 here, I, I, want, I want everybody to notice this. You know what time of year this is? This is summer. <laughs> and, it, and it's not, not been raining. Mm -mm. Now, I want you to notice this plant here. Green. Does it look to you like it's struggling? No. Does it look like it might be kind of healthy, like yeah. dark green, plenty of nitrogen? Yeah. Realizing it hasn't rained, this is summer, and a seed blew in on top of these wood chips, and that happened. I don't know about you, but this gets my attention. I'm a gardener, and I know how hard I work to try to get that what I used to till and fertilize. Right. And I did nothing. This happened accidentally, from my perspective, and looks far better than the stuff that I used to work to do. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah, and so, I mean, it, it speaks volumes to me. I just love that, you know? It's just like, yeah, yeah awesome. Now, get around it. So I want, I, want, I want you to see something. Go, 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 go no, around it with your hands, loosen it up, and, and pull it up, you know, and, and get, get the root system. I want you to see how, mag, how large the root system is. Now go ahead and get, your, get around and pull, and pull it up. Now you see how far out those roots are reached? Wow. Look, look at that. Look at all those roots on that tiny little piece of, piece of grass. You see in dirt, you don't have a root system like that. No, you don't. And you see, this shows me the power of oxygen and the life force of this material. I mean, tell, that's huge. And the reason why it's so green and healthy is because it can eat. It can take up nutrients. When you have compacted soil and you have no roots, I don't care how much you water, the plant can't take up because there's no roots. So roots are, I just get so off on when you have these roots system because they're so massive. Like, wow, it's so cool. Oh, that looks like a clover. It is. Uh-huh, it is. Could you find a four-leaf clover for me there? <laughs> Throw it to him and let, Baby. Let, him, let, him, let him look, check it out. I'm, I'm being facetious. <laughs> you find it. You might get lucky. <laughs> so how much, how many wood chips do you put down on this every year? Um, this place here I just started, this used to be all grass. And I got to the place where I'm not, not, not mowing real well because I use a walk behind mower. So I thought, well, you know, I'm going to cover it with wood chips. But you know what I'm seeing here? Beside being so comfortable to walk on, no mud, you know, no grass to mow, that if things ever change and we have a need to grow food, this space can become one amazing community, community garden instantly. And while I'm waiting, it's just upgrading. It's getting better. I mean, this whole space can be turned into a community it's garden really right, cool. right now. Yeah. And I could grow unreal food here to feed incredible number of people. So it's just awesome. The cover just is such an asset. It's such a blessing. It's so cool. I, uh, I, I have watched your, your videos and, and I have, I've, put, I've ordered in mulch and, and I've had 60 yards that I've put down so far this year. That's a lot. Good for you. But, I, and I just put a whole bunch of potatoes down one lane, uh, on one row, mm -hmm. and I got seven potatoes growing, 
I gave it no water whatsoever, and I live in Spokane. Don't you love it? And oh, and that's I was in just Spokane. Excited. Wow. I was just excited that I didn't put any water, and I didn't do it until June, and I got potatoes. If wow. you, if you, I would encourage you to keep watering, and you're gonna get a lot of nice potatoes. Like water. Yeah. Uh -huh. So if you have water, water, and you're gonna get the best potatoes. I, I do have water, but I was trying to see just what. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just telling you from experience. <laughs> you're already seeing it, it's working, so help it. Well, <laughs> she's got that much mulch because she's trying to kill weeds. Yeah, and it'll, wor it'll work. I have a ton of weeds in a big meadow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever get it. Well, if you get if you get to put cover, you know, eight inches or more wood chips will take out the weeds. I, I, I hope so. It so will. Eight inch layer. It's on it's, top. it's 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 all about suffocation. Listen, if if plants don't have light in there, they die. Yeah, it's true. It's, true. it's so basic. Everything has to have light in there. When you take that out, it dies. Well, it's been an adventure. That's cool, and, and you're, you're going to find it's, it's going to get fun for you because it works and it's very encouraging. And, and, when you, and when you harvest your potatoes, you got a hole dug, take your biggest potato, put it back in the hole and cover it with wood chips, you and you're good for next year. On that one, huh? Don't show My up husband and did that right away and from, and from, from what you said, Paul. Mm -hmm. okay, huh? Well, again, like, here, here's, 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 you know, she's asking through freezing and everything. But we did it. Remember the term, the, the term <laughs> volunteers? Uh -huh. When you harvest potatoes, you don't get them all. You follow me? And next March, you're seeing all these potatoes coming out all around that you didn't get. They're called volunteers. Oh, yes. And they're way ahead of the stuff you're planning. Uh -huh. And they went through the winter with all the freeze. Okay. Did you hear me? I it went through the winter with all the freeze they said would kill it, but it didn't. It's doing fine. Because of the mulch? Because it was covered. Because it was covered. It was covered. It's well, all about covering. I had a potato plants pop out of my blueberry plants that I have in pots. Because mm -hmm. it got there. It came Where there. Where do you live? I live in Federal Way, Washington. Oh, yeah. warmer. She's, <laughs> you're warmer. I'm, I'm on the west side. <laughs> so what, what kind of rainfall do you get here, Paul? We get anywhere from 14 to, to 18 inches. Yeah, and that's about the same as Spokane. Yeah, this, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is the, this, well, we're in a rain shadow. You see it's 70 miles down yeah. the road, there's a rainforest. Yeah. It gets 14 feet of annual rainwater. 14 feet. Did you hear me? When the clouds come in to squim, they're empty. They dumped it all in the rainforest. They pick up on the way to Seattle water, but when they come across squim, there's no water in them. They're t you go to squim right now, all the grass is totally brown. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's true. totally it's brown. Because it, dead it dead doesn't out. rain there. It dumped it all in the rainforest. Mm -hmm. But well, you gave me courage to want to do not water <laughs> was because I was oh, looking at what, you're, dry what you said. It, you know, and, and these trees never get watered. But what, I, what I'm what I'm what I'm discovering is that water is an asset, and it really encourages the composting process. So it's not a negative. Sure. And if you have water, it's a, it's a big asset. Yeah. It's it's a it's a blessing. You know, so you could do without it, but it's just as an improvement if you have it. Yeah, because you see, you see, you see, you see dry mulch, like sitting, sitting up here, let me just show you here. It's not going to break down very quick, because it's very dry. What's this mostly from? This, this, this is cedar, yeah. Is that what you normally would put in here? I put whatever I can get. I'm glad for your question. You see, people will tell you, you can't use cedar, you can't use pine, and you certainly can't use walnut. That's the worst. Are you following me? But what I see in nature, when I ask the creator about the stuff you can't use, I love his sense of humor again. He says, I have no landfill somewhere off on the planet. I'm taking that stuff you can't use. And I started busting up. Everything in nature falls in the ground. No one removes it. And it turns back to dirt. And everything grows fine. So to help me, he had a tree service ring, brought me a 10-yard truckload of exclusive walnut wood chips that he dumped in Squim in August, where it doesn't rain. And I got a four and a half foot raised bed, okay? Four and a half foot raised bed pile of wood chips no water August and out of that pile starts growing this walnut because the walnut food didn't get broken and I'm saying you have my attention <laughs> and it was green it wasn't yellow no nitrogen yeah. high up and this is in August four and a half foot raised bed with no water and in October it was three feet tall my brother dug it up and went and planted his yard he's got a walnut tree but oh, wow. uh, what I love about it is that it was full-on walnut no water I mean everything should should make should have not happened and it did and I'm getting is that I got lied to, and I'll, I'll use whatever I can get. You put it on top of the ground, it breaks down, and you're good. Here's, here's the thing I'm seeing. You see, you see, our problem is is we can't leave it alone, and we till it in. Then you have issues. But you see the tannic acid in, in cedar, which is toxic. Tannic acid is hard on plants. When that falls in the ground, 
Through the composting process, by the time the material gets to the roots, composting has changed it. The tannic acid is not there anymore. And what I'm seeing, the Creator who made this, coming in a place of all wisdom, all knowledge, didn't miss anything. You hearing me? He didn't miss anything. He made it perfect. And everything left alone, going through the compost process, ends up perfect. Because that's how, and here's the word, from dust we came, from dust we turn. Everything he made turns back to dirt. It's the most beautiful recycling program I've ever seen. It's awesome. Paul, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, we've been trying to get wood chips with the branches uh -huh. and leaves and all that. Mm -hmm. And when we go to tree service or we see someone in the Seattle area, uh -huh. Uh, they tell us we don't. You don't want these wood chips. You tell it's them. You diseased. tell them I would like those wood chips. Okay. The disease is no issue. Like I say, in nature, diseased trees fall over and die. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. You get a drought. The forest turns brown and trees die. Mm -hmm. They fall over and die. And when it rains again, everything's growing green in that in that space. Did you hear me? Yeah. Through the composting process, whatever disease issue is there is totally eradicated. Before planting in it, do we need to wait some time? I wouldn't worry about it. I just pulled the wood chip. Here's the thing. Again, you ask the Creator. You ask Him, can I plant in this? If you have peace, go for it. You have a check note. Okay. You can always trust peace. Okay. It'll never lead you astray. What about pesticides? They spread it on it or anything like that? I just, if you look at this, look at the sky above me, it's pretty, you know, it's a little, not, as, not as white as, I mean, not as blue as it could be, but mm -hmm. when you realize the pollution, China, and the rest of the world is putting on this planet today. And to have this clean air, this earth is amazing at recovery. It's huge. It's amazing. It's just incredible how it cleans up. Yeah. And so I just have total confidence that it's good. Okay. I'm not going to worry about it. Right. So I'm going to force them to get Whatever it. you have, give me. I don't care what it Keep is. Us no, and and don't want this. I do want it. Thank you. <laughs> And, and, um, and when you come back in a few years, watch what it does mm -hmm. so you can change your mind and realize that it's okay. You know? Okay. All right. I, uh, I have a little concern in Spokane. We have such fire danger right now. Mm -hmm. Do I have any problems? No. Here's what's so cool. I'm so glad for these questions. The girls who did the film, there's two young women who did the film, who were living in, in Big Sur, California, out in the country. And their neighbor was off-grid, had, a, had a, um, a solar system. And somehow it caught on fire and burned the house down. The fire department didn't get there until the house was gone. After they put out all the fire, they came over to the girl's house to make sure nothing was happening there. And when the fire chief saw all the wood chips up against the house, he says, Wow, this is the most amazing fire retardant. Because wood chips are in a composting state. They're not going to catch fire. They're composting. So I can put it up. It's an acid. It's going to stop a fire. It's going to stop a fire. It's not going to encourage a fire. Wow. It's okay. composting is awesome. It's going to save your place. It's going to save. They, they, the, the fire says, this is a fire retardant. He was blown away. He was totally blown away. Because you know, he kicks it, kicks it away. Look, look, look at it there. That's wet. Mm -hmm. No fire is going to you know, happen in that. It can't. It can't he's not gonna, the surface. It, but 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 but, it, but um, see the garden they were watering, uh -huh. so it was wet on the surface. Oh, so and in your water. garden, you're going to be watering, so yeah. it's not going to happen. Well, it can't happen. So we get a lot of water where we live. Yeah, water is a tremendous asset. I mean, it's just it's awesome. Do you, do you have a lot of mushrooms? I, I have uh, yeah. plenty of mushrooms. Oh, see, mushrooms are fungi. I want everybody to hear me. This is really significant about wood chips. Why I love wood chips over any other material that people use for composting, such as manures or grass clippings or leaves, fungi, I mean, wood chips have fungi. Fungi is such an incredible part of soil life, a huge component. And nothing but wood products create fungi. Nothing else does. And so it's just so awesome. You know, think, think like one for my, my mycelium is a fungi. It grows under the soil for miles. We're talking miles. And when plant roots attach to that, they access the life force spread out for miles. I mean, it's so huge. It's, and this is why if someone were to ask you, where in the plant is the most fertile soil? If it goes to the forest. Fungi. I mean, tell you, it's just, it's, there's nothing. It is the ultimate soil material in the world. This is what I'm basically doing. I'm, I'm creating the forest floor in my yard. This is what the forest looks like. 
you know, and you can see how things are growing. They're saying, I like it here. This is a nice place to live. I mean, really, you know, it's, it's so simple. It's not hard. It's really, really easy. So, go, go back to your, your um, school experience. Where would things grow better? Under trees or in full sun? I know you're going to say under. Well, I'm, I'm not going to say. You're going to. You're going to say. Look at the look at the strawberries. I, I, look at your strawberries. Look at the strawberries yes. under under my tree, and then look at the ones over there. In full sun, look at the size difference. See over there. Oh yeah. Well, over there, but you see the, you see the size difference and the color difference. I planted twelve there and twelve here. Wow. Same day. I'm just telling you, man, I, I, you can't deny the evidence. It's huge. Well, you can try. Well, if you're real, <laughs> you can't. Right. You know? And it's just, I mean, I'm blown away at how much better things grow under my trees. And I'll take you through here all day long and show it to you because it's just, it's just so cool. What type of tree is this? This is a cherry tree. Oh. And it's huge. That's, that's from the roots, yeah. Paul, oh, I see your... Uh, Compost here looks just like the stuff we got, and I'm told that you shop at no, Cascade no. Bark. Is that not yeah, right? yeah, yeah? Yeah, this, this is um, screen wood chips. You see, you, you see the, the chip, wood chips right here. Yeah. You see that fine material? Yeah. That stuff there is what went through the screen. That, that's it. Okay. This that, is what. That's we got. exactly. That's you're going to grow an awesome garden in that stuff. But we didn't. And that's what I'm here for. Did you water? <laughs> you water it. We water. Did you it twice water? A day, yeah. Morning and evening. And our it. vegetables just did not, they failed to thrive. They were very small and it's almost like... How much did you put down? We did the, uh, we had sod and we put down newsprint and then we put about eight inches of this stuff on top of that and planted some seeds and some direct, you know, seedlings. Yeah, probably, too. you see that... Nothing the, grew. Yeah, they need to get in the soil. So you got to eight inches, was, you not enough soil. Pro well. Probably four inches would have been, been better. You see, this is not really deep. It's a, it's a, it's a, you know, it's, it's a thin layer there. It's not, and so the roots get into the soil. That's what we were concerned yeah. about. That it, they just didn't have enough. They didn't get to dirt. The, so, the soil. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would next time like you know four inches max, okay. and then because the roots will go through that and get into the soil. And you see, as that material is laying on the ground and water is going through it, it creates compost seed that's feeding the soil. Yeah. So your soil is always in an upgrade. Where that, that eight inches up there, it's just, it's the roots can't it get into. Almost it. look at the rain or water just went right through. Yeah, exactly. Right through. You know, okay. and, and so and so the roots aren't aren't accessing the soil yet because so, it was too thick. Okay. So now next year, how do we resolve this just, problem? Well, just just spread it out. Get your rake and spread it wider. So it's thinner. Yeah, well, make it thinner. We we built these beautiful paths with pathway bark in between. Mm -hmm. So we okay, just rake that away. Well, I think I think you know it's going to settle just through the year well, as as it breaks down. So I think maybe next year you can just plant right in it. Just plant right yeah, in it. I think I think it'd be okay. good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because it's going to it settles everything. You know, breaking the, you know as it breaks yeah. down it settles. You know, so grab winter. It should, yeah, it totally should. You know. Do its thing. Where do you okay, say good. you get your screen? Cascade Bark here in town, it, it, they, they, they get, you know, like the, you see that pile of wood chips over there? It looks just, it's this stuff. Yeah, and, and basically they screen it, and the fine material, like you see there, is what is what I have in my garden. You know, and, mm -hmm. and, 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 well, just, I mean, go check out the size of those beets and the color. Oh, I'm so oh, sorry. I didn't see it. <laughs> is anybody growing beets? Yes, I just pulled my... You see the size of that? Do you ever add any humus? Like no, that's these wood chips. We have. You see, you see how big those greens are. Are these golden beets? Those are golden beets. They're humongous. That's my point. Oh, that's what I want you to get. Yeah. Oh, look at that. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And that was planted here in June. This is what I just pulled. <laughs> yeah, look at the size of those greens. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just totally like, you got to be kidding. That's amazing. It's awesome. It's how it should be. Now, last year it wasn't that big. This is what I'm saying. This, this multiplication is just really cool. It takes time. It takes time. Are you keeping your seeds from one season? Yeah, well, what I do is I, I, I'll get like a plant like that, my uh -huh. biggest plant, let that go to seed wow. and collect seed from it. Okay. So you always want to get the best, mm -hmm. sure. you know? Right. Where are all the weeds? Where are the weeds? 
Well, you notice weeds don't grow in this stuff. Plant. <laughs> I can probably find, if I look for it, I can probably find one or two for you, but here, let me tell you something about weeds. When you have tilled soil that nature knows is not unsafe and wants to cover and you water it, every weed seed that blows in is going to germinate because nature knows the soil is not safe uncovered, so it's trying to recover it. We already have a covered place like this, and I want you all to notice this is just watered. You and you water dirt, what is the result? Mud. mud. I want you to notice this is not mud. You're, she's walking on it and her feet are totally clean. There's nothing sticking to her feet. And this just got watered. No mud. Because it's mostly just wood. It's, it's all, mud. yeah. It's, it's not sand. It's, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, not, it's not dirt. It's no dirt. Plant your seeds. Are you just making a... I take my rake and make yeah. a quarter inch groove like that, yeah. put the seeds in and cover it. I'm done. Oh, okay. here's, here's the insanity of reading, reading, reading the package label where they say plant an inch deep. Everybody listen to me. I'm talking about insanity on your, on your package label. If you look at nature, remember when you have questions you go to nature? In nature, seeds fall on the ground in fall plants flower and they fall on the ground and fall. They're not buried. Then the Creator does this thing like, I want to get you your attention. So He sends snow and ice and floods, all this just nasty stuff on top of the seeds. And in the spring they all grow, start growing. And you know what's so cool about it? If you pay attention, they come up long before the last frost date. Yes. Are you hearing me? You're told you can't plant anything until your frost's all over, where nature says, really? And everything's growing great, frost didn't hurt it, and the stuff in your garden isn't, and the frost is killing it, and nature's trying to tell you, hello? We need no help. We know how to do this. Would you please pay attention to us and let us teach you, because you got lied to. <laughs> You're not getting it. I tell you, it's so cool. My onions grew mm -hmm. all summer, all winter long. I At had least to I actually can here. remove them, spring onion, and remove them so I can plant my wall of olives. I know. Abund I Abundance can be a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get the snow. And, well, I guess we had a day of snow and the hard frost, but, but doesn't hurt it. See what I what I what I'm what I'm seeing is when you have nutrient dense soil, there are no issues. When plants are healthy and well, cold is not a challenge. They're not bothered by it because they're strong. When you're weak and dilapidated and like, I don't know if I can live, cold will take you out. But when you're like, <clears throat> I'm powerful, cold, I can take you on, you're no big deal. It's awesome. It's just so cool. <laughs> Look at these nice onions. If you like onions, snap off a green and eat it. Snap off one of those greens and eat it and just see the nice flavor. If you, if you like greens, sample some of these beet greens because you, you'll be amazed how sweet and good they are. They, I mean, they really taste good. I just ate one of them. Mm -hmm. They were good. Yeah. <laughs> and they're really good for you. Mm -hmm. Dark green leafy vegetables are really good. But see, my beets taste like dirt. Your beet green tastes sweet. But I'm not growing in this. Well, you need to. I know I do. Some of some of pull a beet and eat it and yeah no you, yellow, yellow there's a yellow one right there Where? right there Detroit. yeah you see the first one there that doesn't belong is a yellow pull it, it. Is a yellow. Yep. and and eat it I want you to, to see the incredible flavor and then the color the color of that is just amazing it's good. everybody you can you can pick, you can pick, you know that that whole roll there is yellows right right in front of her just just pull them up and eat them because they're really good yeah, eat it. Eat the beet. Now look at that color. Show that color. Show people that color of that. How does that taste? Good. Not like at home. This is the part that blows my mind. It's like so tender. I like to eat this. Here. Paul, is this 
over many years multiple times. Yes, yeah. So the soil is this, down, it's in down in there. It's down in there. And on, on, on the soil below is like, you know, a covering of wood chips, then some horse and, sh and, uh, and, and horse manure with sawdust, then more wood chips and then this stuff. So it's like layers and layers and layers okay, over so years. Right. This has been like, you know, 15 years in here. So over fresh... Sod, sod, it's not going to work right away. Not, not, imme not Im Im immediately. Yeah. You know, it takes time. We watched in the video. It looked like that's what they did. They laid this newspaper down and then. You want it? You, right there. This one right here. No, the second, second, the third one over. That one. We brought our. It shouldn't. <laughs> I want you to. Is that good tasting? But listen, I want, I want, you, I want you all to listen to me. Wait till she brings. Listen to me. Everybody, get my attention. I want you to get my attention. The Creator is good, and He made everything good. Everything He made is good, and when something's not good, it's been changed. It's not how it was made. All right. You're good. Yeah. Look now. Now, now show that to everybody. Oh my goodness, Mars. Oh my goodness. You just put the mulch down, and you didn't do anything else. That's all. That's it. Come share. What's that? When they when they go to seed. Someone have a knife. Anybody? Have, any of the men have a knife here? No, that water is too far away. This is not dirt. It's compost. It's not going to hurt you. We ate the beef. Oh, it is little. I didn't see. I will eat those. I just wiped it off. That's what I did Somebody as a kid. Somebody still want a knife? Yeah, he's, she's got a bigger one. Come on over here. Got a bigger one? She's got a bigger one, yeah. I need one more. You said it was cedar grove and squint? It's, it's, no, it's, um, it's called um, it's cascade bark and squint. Now open that up and look at the color of that. Is that awesome? Look at the moisture on this one. Look at all the water. Yeah. This one's dripping. Wow. Oh, yes. It's supposed to. What? The Creator made things good. Yeah. He did well. so gorgeous. for her. Now, 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 from your experience, when you get something that big, it's going to be tough. Are you getting it? Yeah. This isn't. Let me tell you why. Everybody hear me. When things grow quickly, they're tender and sweet. When they grow slow, uh, 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 they're tough and bitter. It's all about the speed they grow. It's huge. It's really huge. See, these beets were planted by seed in June, so they're not very old. Grab that there. Grab that. Am I gonna grab it? There's a knife right there. I mean, it's gonna fall. Grab it. Everything. We'll act like I'm a table. I don't need much. Just a wow. So now, could you all do me a favor? Mm -hmm. These greens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you it, you, well, well, on the way to the chickens, there's be a wagon you can put them. But if you notice on the ground, there isn't a lot of stuff spread out. Mm -hmm. That's intentional. And so I don't like stuff on the ground because if you throw it there, I got to pick it up. Because see, I was raised in a Swiss German culture that says everything has a place, should be in places, so disorder isn't comfortable for me. So right. hold on to that, and we get to the up here a little, little ways, and we'll be a wagon, we can put that, I'll take it to the chickens. And you'll enjoy watching, the chickens will just love this. This is, this is, this is major food for them. This, this is their favorite food. Okay, are you, are you, so you're, are you starting to get that food's supposed to taste good? I won't even eat my own beets I grow, because they taste like dirt. But I'm eating a beet. Yeah, and, and and you're here today to give you a this. You know what this is? This is a preview of upcoming attractions in your garden. Yes. This is where you're going. I'm hoping. You're going there. It, going you can't there. help it. That's why I'm here. Yeah. It, now, when you have when you harvest the beet, do you take the greens and put them in your compost? Or do you no, I take the greens out? and give to the chickens. <laughs> and then the chickens eat it, make nice eggs, and they turn it back into compost that looks like this. And I don't have all those funky, ugly greens in my yard looking funky. See, I, I like order, and having all that stuff composting in my in my yard doesn't look cool. And the chickens, the chickens will eat it, which is good food for them, and create eggs. So it's a, I have 25 chickens because I create a lot of yard waste, and I need that many to keep up with what I make. Yeah, it's all about balance. You want to be able to produce enough food to feed them, and so if you have too many chickens, you're going to buy food. If you have too few, they won't keep up and you're gonna, your, your chicken pen is going to be too full. 
And so you have to yeah. find a balance. And you have all these great vegetables, you can't huh? make omelets with no eggs. So, all's yeah. got all figured out. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Whole meal deal. Mm. This is, how come you don't put wood chips in between? This is wood chips. This is this is screen wood chips. It's all wood chips. Why would I put it in between? So you don't because it's in. because it's thin, so the water will still evaporate faster than if you had thicker wood chips. Oh, you think so? That's what I'm asking. Well, with your foot, start moving that and see how quick it gets damp. Well, I was doing under there, and there was no water. There, there was. So there was. Mm -hmm. Further there, this looks like it was watered recently. That was, but um, I want you to look at the plants. Do they appear to be dehydrated? Yeah, but I don't know. When was the last time you watered them? But you said it was dry. Yeah. What I'm trying to tell you is what you're seeing when you connect the dots isn't real because those plants are not dehydrated. And which is which, and I'm not watering. Which is saying. They're getting they water. Arm, like, are they tapping in underneath? <laughs> they, you saw how, long, how far that root went? They must be. Because if you're eating them, they're full of water. How often do you water them now? I don't know. Not that often. My orchard's never been watered. And it's all, all the plants are full of water. And so, um, you know, watering's, you know, it's not, not, not like you can overwater. So if you, have a, if you have a desire to water, just have that and enjoy it. Because it's, it's impossible to overwater in wood chips. Let me give you an example. The, the whole rainforest, when we talked about that, 14 feet of water a year. You walk in the rainforest, there's no water to your feet. The wood chips displace the, the water. It's awesome. And when there's no water, they retain it. I, I love wood chips. No brain. And they know how to get rid of too much water and hold on to what they need it. Now, just, just as a passing, you know where I live here? This is western Washington, 530 feet above sea level. Figs don't grow here. I want you to notice my fig tree, and, and if you focus closely, it's loaded with figs, and they get ripe, and it's awesome. Another thing that doesn't grow here is grapes right behind you. Grapes don't grow here either, and those produce great grapes. Now, the reason they're doing so well is because I have that wood behind, which acts as a heat sink, knocks out the wood, and holds, holds heat, so that really helps. But um, I just want you to get that all the things they say you can't isn't real. I put a stick in the ground four years ago. That's what happened. That's four years old from a stick. No root, a stick I stuck in the ground. That's four years from a stick. Is this the first year for, for fruit for that tree? No, it took three years. It took, yeah, so, so you, you had fruit last year. Yeah, then. yeah, tons of fruit last year. And if you look close, that thing is full of figs. Full of figs. Are they ripe or not? They'll get ripe. It's the only one that gets ripe here. It's called Desert King, and that one ripens here. Yeah. Totally. Fall, like the crater does. If you notice in nature, every fall the crater puts a covering of needles and leaves over the whole planet. I love it. It's just the, the best time because he sends rain after that and snow to create compost tea to feed the soil for next spring's growth. When do farmers fertilize? Spring. It's stupid. They're planting in spring. Yeah, I put my wood chips down. I'm just spring. telling you, if you pay attention to nature, it's perfect. It's the best, and it's very obvious when to do stuff. You know, if you look at nature. <laughs> Now, looking at that tree, does that look like it might be nitrogen deficient to you? No, not at all. I just want you—I want you to pay attention to the color you're seeing here and the and the size of plants, and start connecting dots. And I'm not using fertilizer any, anywhere. I never would because fertilizer is a waste. It's it's so deficient. It's so less than. Yeah, and I've been using it all. It's totally a drag. I use organic fertilizer. It's all the same. It's it's yeah. totally useless. So, Paul, why don't you thin your onion? You just put it down and let it grow? Why should I thin? Well, What's the point of thinning? I see size. that you don't need to. Yeah, okay. <laughs> see, now, now, let me, she just asked the question, why don't I thin? I answer my own. Let, let me answer her back with stupidity <laughs> of thinning. You paid money for those seeds. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. And you're going to go out and spend your time and remove your investment and throw it away. Did you hear me? You're going to take time to destroy your investment. <gasps> I can't believe how big they are. Well, the reason they is they're big is because the soil's soft, and as they grow, they push themselves out of each oh, other's way because they can. Oh, In compacted God. soil, they can't. Oh, 
Right. And so the wood chips solve all the issues. There are issues. I, got it. I love it. I love it. And look at all those onions in the small space. That's, That's cool. Amazing. Even those under the ground that are not on top, I dug down and they're like that. Yeah, it's cool. awesome. And you want to you want to have you like you like onions? Oh. Go over there and get one of those small walla walla sweets over there and eat it. Just see how totally sweet it is. It'll blow your mind. Leave the big ones because I, my wife wants those <laughs> because she really likes those too. No, the, the, no, beyond. The ones that, that, that had those tops. Just pull up one that's, not, but that's kind of small and, and peel it and eat it and just see how good it is. Sure. Well, there's a lot. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. This is, it's the sun's perfect. Cool. Thank you so much, buddy. You're welcome. You're such an inspiration. Blessings, guys. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, now take a bite of that and talk to us. Amazing. <laughs> is that sweet? Very sweet. Do you think it might need some water? No. <laughs> look how much look how much water's in that thing. Get the small ones. My wife likes the bigger ones. Oh, okay. These ones are ready to be pulled. That's what I want. Are you cutting the tops off of them before or just using oh, them? Oh, I eat them. I see, the, see those, those, those are onion greens. Why, why plant, small, plant, plant onion greens? I mean, you get both. With, with the, with it doesn't take the... They don't, they don't need the, the greens to continue growing. Well, you can see places I've cut them off and the yeah. plant doesn't seem very small below. No, it doesn't. Again, it's just so much of the stuff we're told has no demonstration in nature. It's not real. It's not true. <laughs> and what I'm seeing is, see, pruning is a stimulant. It makes it actually grow more. When you cut something, it stimulates more growth. So it comes back. So it's not like a negative, it's a positive. Have you seen companion planting being important at all? Or not here. Just grow anywhere? Well, look. Like you could put one thing next to another. It doesn't well, matter. Well, look at it. I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not seeing any. I mean, that, I'm sure companion plant is fine, but yeah. I don't have issues. <laughs> See, all that stuff is told you because you have issues. Things aren't doing well. Yeah. yeah I don't have a not, not doing well situation here. Mm -hmm. right. So I can just do whatever I want because it just does well. <laughs> That's a cool spot. Yeah, she's, she's smart. She knows where, 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 where to relax. That's a beautiful spot. Yeah. Enjoy yourself, good puppy. That's so nice. And look, look, she's, she's, and she's eating, eating the food. She likes the greens. This plant here is called Holland Greens. And I want you to see the incredible water content in this plant. It's totally amazing. Now I want you to start with the stem because the stem, from your experience, will be tough, stringy, and bitter. And then talk to us. Look, look how much water is in it. Are you getting that? It has a unique flavor too. It's good. Is it bitter? No. No. It's not supposed to be. And that's really good food. It is medicinal. It's medicinal. It, because it is. It's totally medicinal. It's totally good food. Yeah, we read the other day that when things turn bitter, they're actually producing more beneficial chemicals. Yeah. Maybe not as funny. What's that? They took it down. It was dying. They cut all their fruit trees down because they were doing so poorly. It was sad because I really liked having it there as a demonstration, but it's over. Yeah, it was it was sad because I really really liked you know having the, having the demonstration, but oh well. Your soil's still a foot taller. <laughs> well, let's head on over here in the orchard and check out my trees.
cool. Oh, cool. And I've called you probably three times already. All right. You walked me through it. But I'm having trouble. So. What kind of trouble? So, I lost four of the. I lost four of the um, twelve. The leaves just turned brown and crumbled. Were you watering? Yeah, I was. I was trying not to water um, tons because they told me not to, and I was trying to utilize the wood chips. Yeah, no, what, what, what you need to understand with wood chips is they're an amazing sponge. Right. And it takes a lot of water for them to be absorbed. Okay. So you probably weren't watering enough. I wasn't watering. Because that water, we, we, to get to the soil where the roots were, it had to go through the wood chips. Right. And the wood chips are a major sponge. They're just sucking it up. Okay. So I think if you pull the wood chips back, you're going to find... We did that eventually. And, and what was the ground like? Um, in places it was moist and in places it was dry. Yeah. And I'm sure that was probably what happened, yeah. dehydration. You know the around the corner of your log cabin? Uh-huh. You took me back there last mm -hmm. year and showed me your clay. Uh -huh. That's how I am. It's okay. So that's why I started doing this. Yeah. I'm just saying, the, the water is a major asset for the young trees. Because you mm -hmm. see, the roots aren't developed much yet, they're small. Okay. And, and so they really need some encouragement. So, so I, I think you need to really do some more water. Okay, and then I, another question I have, I called you and talked to you about this, about the bugs. And that was before I planted the trees. And you said that Civil War happened. And they would take care of themselves. They'll kill each other off, and then the good ones and, 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 stay. The, and the leaves fall off in the winter anyway. So right. you know. And so I have tons of um, earwigs. earwigs, like unbelievable. I used with, to have them too. And it's okay. Just still let them keep having. Civil they're not war. here now, and they're there because my plants weren't well. Okay. You know, and, and my sense is they're the leaves are chewing on, going to fall off anyway. Okay. So why kill all the good bees, all right. of the good ladybugs right. to get rid of their earwigs? Okay. It doesn't make sense. Okay. You know? Yeah. So I didn't want to do that because I started the mason. Yeah. Bees and you like don't yours. you don't want to kill them, and that's the the the, the, the um, insecticides going to kill them all. Okay. So and just let the them point is, is those leaves are going to fall off in the fall. Right. Right. They're not they're not forever. Right. And next year you get a whole new a whole new opportunity to do good again. So do you think the four that they did their little crun the crunchy things? Do you think the roots are probably still doing okay? I would leave them until next April. Okay. That's and right now water. I've been doing that. Yeah. Just like I water. Them. I wouldn't take next next spring. Nothing comes on. Take it out. But give them. You, you might be surprised. Okay. okay. They'll come back. And then the other question, so I won't utilize you the whole time, was: Did you take your leaders out of these, and that's why you have no? Yeah. You see what I did? If, 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 if you look, you look at the down. top of top of those trees right. in my hand. Right. When I got that high, I cut to a lateral branch. That's, okay. That became the leader. Okay. And I would never let anything go beyond it. Okay. So and you I see, as it as it continues to grow out, they get heavy and bend down because of the weight. Right. And mine are doing that, but I have that thing going up through well, the middle. Well, take it, take so, it out. Okay, I wanted to know. Again, the okay. thing the thing you need to understand is these trees are here to serve me, not me them. Okay. If I can't reach it, it's in my way. It's out of here. Okay. Because I'm in charge. Okay. And I'm not going to be a slave to this tree. Okay. This tree is going to serve me. And so you're in charge. You just totally arrange everything so you can reach it, so the sun can access okay. it, and it's convenient. So I didn't it, leave a lot of apples on, and they're already the two or three, because these are brand new this year, these trees. They're pretty healthy, and they're all doing this little bowing thing. Because like the apples yours, are heavy. Right. And I took them off so some would still bow, but not break them off. Yeah. And so they're all doing their thing. They almost look like yours in places, but I just need to chop out the middle. Yeah. Okay. Just and clean cut right at the base, okay. you know. And I'll show you when the, when they first start. You can actually just rub them off when they're little, you know. Don't, okay. don't, and, don't. And can you just do that any time of the year? Any time. See if something's in the wrong place. The sooner you get rid of it, the better. Okay. Why should you let it take energy out of the tree if you don't want it? Get rid of it up front, and, and you're good. And I have one more question. Sure. When it comes fall, or no, next spring, and I'm going to prune, this will be my first time. Uh-huh. Um, I've been watching your videos, but there's these little funny things that are sticking out, and you seem to like those. What are those? What, are those the ones that are going to bring the apples? The fruit spurs are the bigger buds. So it's a little thing that sticks out of wood about like this. It's a fruit spur. That's a fruit spur, yeah, and, and, and I want And you'll those. see it in the spring, they flower. Okay. That's what produces. Leave those on. Don't. Yeah, because you want you want fruit. And okay, so, I'm just trying to. And so, and so you'll see the see the small the flat ones are leaf are leaf buds, okay. but the thick ones are fruit spurs, and okay. they flower, and that's what creates okay. the fruit. I wanted to get that. 
Yeah, and, and you'll see when they when when, when, it, when it comes on, they they create flowers. Okay. And that was I see this poor woman here. She's eating one totally green apple. It's not even close to ripe. Oh, I, I found it on the. I, and you're welcome to. But what's amazing to me is you're eating it. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I like and you and you say you love it because that thing's you know not even close to ripe. Oh, There's no flavor, and it's just completely like really. But it just shows how you've been so deprived. <laughs> I'm being real. The stuff in the store is so bad that that's good. It's it's hilarious. It's just I mean it's sad, but on the other hand, like really, oh, and you're so welcome to it. it. Can't hurt you, but it's just not, not, not much to it, you know. Are the woodpeckers making those? Yeah, woodpeckers made all those holes. They worked hard for nothing because um, you know, they're not there. There's, there's no bugs. Do you want to do it? Do you want to do a potato dig? dig? Sure. Anybody grow potatoes? Anybody knows how you're supposed to grow potatoes? You till deep. <laughs> let me show you. Let me let me give you a demonstration on how easy it is to grow and harvest and plant potatoes. Yes, very selective. Because not all apples are the same. So how did you make that decision? You well, I eat apples. Okay. And if something and if something I like, I want, I'll keep that one. If I don't, I won't. Okay. This grabbing scene here is probably the, the most amazing summer apple on the planet. It's just totally the best. There's nothing comparable. Mm -hmm. I have you know five of them in my orchard because it's just so good. What's that now? There's a potato that's oh yeah, there's because it, 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 it's yeah. oh, see, I, see, I'm, see, I want I want you to, to all notice that I'm growing potatoes under my apple tree in the root ball okay. in a place that you aren't supposed to. Okay. See, I'm making a point now. I'm making a point now to do things they say you can't. <laughs> I'm looking for the most hard place to do stuff to do it just to show that it's not true. So when you go to dig potatoes, typically you bring a you bring a fork right. because your ground is hard and you can't access it. I want you to notice I don't have a fork. I want you also to notice. Then I'll do it in the ground. <laughs> I've been doing in pots because I don't want fork marks in my potatoes. Well, I want you to show you how I want to show you, I want to show you how. You should probably start eating those, you know, which is fine. <laughs> you're, you're you're not hungry, huh? So you get on the ground, which is nice and soft, comfortable, and you come to your potato plant here, and with your hands you just pull it up. And then with your hands, you start moving the wood chips, and you start taking out potatoes. You see, my hands are doing all the work. You're not using a shovel? No shovel. And if you're noticing how quickly this is getting nice and damp here, mm -hmm. and see, by digging with my hands, this is just really doing amazing things for my heart because it's telling me, like, this used to be clay and rock that I couldn't move with a fork or a shovel and I'm doing it with my hands. So what I do now, I got that hole dug, I take my biggest potato, put it back in the hole and cover it, and I just plant it for next year. I'm done. That is the full ex extent of all I'll do here ever for potatoes. Wow. So do you do it under all your trees? No, because I can't use that many potatoes. You can have them. Anybody wants these? They're really, these are really. This is a nice. They're, they're nice. You know, you can steam or fry. But anybody, you can come back and get all these. Do you know what brand that is? It's it's a red one. I can't think of. The, I got it from. Norland. Red Norland. No, Norland's a different one. This is another red one. But I can't remember the name. 
it's you know the red ones are early. You know they come come earlier. Nope. Here's why I don't need help. Because if you weren't here, there wouldn't be help. And so if I don't do this myself, I'm not gonna. I wouldn't be able to do it. So I I have to I have to maintain. You know. My my um ability to to, to get up. So thank you. So like I say, you can you can you, those are really good to eat, and so you're all welcome to. You're gonna get them now, but on your way home, you can just come by and pick them up. And plan it. Plan it, yeah. <laughs> but you just, you see how easy that was, and when you look at my hands, they're not dirty because that wasn't dirt. Right. Wood chip compost is so fun to work in. It's just it's the best. The holes are from a woodpecker who worked real hard to get nothing because there's no bugs in my trees. But you know what's, inter what's, inter what's interesting about the woodpecker? I had, a guy, I, I, I had this really neat man come from Italy who had been farming all his life. You could look at his body, his, his skin, that he, you could tell he'd been outside a long time. I mean, he had that weathered look. And Italian people as a culture are not, are not to themselves, they're very outgoing. And this guy's in my face. Everybody's saying, you can't do that. That's not how you do it, you know? And I says, well, come look. And he's starting to get like, I got lied to. And so when he saw my tree over, he says, you know, they did it in my cherry tree that died. And I says, your cherry tree wasn't well. He says, this tree's not affected by it because it's well. Your cherry tree. And so you can see in his face, he's starting to like shift gears like, whoa. So I was showing him over here. The reason why things grow so much better on my, on my fruit trees is the Creator showed me this principle I want to show you, it's really huge. You see, the roots of my trees, these are all dwarf trees. All my trees are dwarf. You know how they create dwarf trees? You know how they're made? Graft. They graft into a rootstock that doesn't develop a root system because you have a small root system that's going to maintain a dwarf tree. But you know the Creator laughs. In Psalm chapter 2 it says God laughs. And God laughs at the whole concept of a dwarf tree. He just starts smiling like you got to be kidding. Because if you plant a dwarf tree in a nutrient-dense environment, it's not going to be dwarf. No, those are very... <clears throat> usually I have <laughs> roots. You see that where his camera's over there? That's a plum tree. I have roots coming out from that tree 35 feet radius. Not diameter, radius. So the creator says, go over, I'm going to show you why your things go better than the trees. Go out 35 feet from that tree and do a circle around it and imagine in your mind the size of that root system, how big that is. Look at the size of the tree. There's no way possible for that tree to take in and consume all that's coming into the roots and so it displaces the excess out through its leaves and the plants that need to be fed from the top and the bottom. And I thought, whoa, huge, totally huge. And what I'm seeing is so cool about this, you're gonna see, I have all this stuff growing in my trees is that because this is nutrient dense, plants growing around them take nothing from them because there's so much. It's plenty for everybody. And, and, and what I want you to get, what you're gonna see today when you walk through my place is everything I'm growing, all my food is, is on a half an acre, one half acre. And I'm producing so much, it's incredible. And what I want you to get is the reason we have large farms in the United States is because they're producing so little. The reason they're big is because they're producing so little, because it's unnatural. When you have nutrient density, you can grow a lot in a small space, because it just happens. I can't help it. Hey Paul, what's your thought on the, the wildlife? Wildlife? The critters that come around. You see that dog? Yes. My sense is is that I like wildlife, but this is private property, and you're not welcome here. Okay. And if you come here, you're trespassing. 
and I'm gonna, I have a, 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 a security system that's going to take you out if you don't leave on your own. Okay. I'm being serious. This is private property, and I have, will not tolerate the livestock, the wild, the wild critters, to come on my property. There's plenty all around you out here, but not here. But you know what's amazing about them? Right across the street, my neighbor has an apple tree that the deer come right past to get to mine <laughs> because they know which is more nutrient dense. They're very intelligent. Mm -hmm. they, know, know, they know where the good stuff is. It's the good stuff over here. But now they that. They haven't decimated anything. Well, because I just have a young dog. They, last year they did, but this young dog is making a difference and it's awesome. <laughs> I'm so thankful. Don't move that no, no, I'm, I'm going to walk right through it. Thank you. Yeah. Now, as you walk through, I just want you to notice the density of apples right. on these trees. <laughs> You know, it's just, it's awesome. And, and they all get big. They tell you if you don't thin, they won't get big. That's not true. Do you see that tree there you're, you're, you're leaning on? Is that one unusual looking tree to you? Does that look like a Japanese bonsai? Look at that thing. It comes out of the ground, does this split. There's no central leader. It's like the most, the coolest tree on the planet, man. I love it. And you know what? It's a Japanese tree. It's Mutsu. Yeah, people, people tell me that. This is the first time in my life I had to bend over to pick an apple. All you were saying that a normal apple tree that hasn't been done this way, it's going to take a few years to get it there. Is that correct? Depending on its size, if they're real old, yeah, You're not going to correct it immediately. These are old trees. Yeah. I'd, and like, I'd like to get them like that. But, but, you, but, take about three or four but here's the thing is, is one third of max, of the, you can't take more than one third of the to entire mass at any one time. So you got to do it and over slow. time. Yeah. Okay. Now here, here's, here's, here's a demonstration I want you to see. You see this root sucker right here? Everybody come look at this. That one, that right one. there. Mm -hmm. That's coming from that plum tree over there. That's a plum tree. That's, that's a plum. So that Italian guy was telling you about, this is so, so cool. This was here when he was here, but it was real tall. And I told him, he says, that's impossible. The roots, the, tr the roots only go as far as the drip line. See, that's what he's holding school. So he breaks off a piece and he walks over there and he looks at it and he, starts, he says, I has got to use this. This is coming from that tree. And I says, I want you to get it. It totally blew his mind. He couldn't believe it, but that's, that's reality. This is where that's coming from, from that tree, 35 feet away. So just in your mind here, like you come out here, do a circle around that tree, this far out, all the way around, and imagine how many roots are there. And see, this is why my trees, I don't have to water. You see, it's not about the amount of water in the ground, it's about the plant's capacity to take up the water. And you see, when you have a totally weak tree with tree roots only going as far as the drip line, you gotta water a lot because there's no roots. When you have a, a root system this big, it's getting water because the roots are everywhere, and they can. Will you leave that there now? I'm gonna leave that there because I love having a demonstration. My, you know, um, because a lot of times my son's out here pulling stuff and says, I like having something I can show people because this is, you know, you can't, I can say it, but when you see it, you can't deny it. You know? Oh, he's baloney, he, that's not real, but mm -hmm. there it is. Mm -hmm. What do you think about all that produce over there under my trees, that cabbage and all those potatoes? Awesome. Isn't that cool? Awesome. Under my trees, look how good that looks. I got cabbage over there under my trees. Well, how old is this tree? Right that here. tree is there th um, three years old. Three, okay. Not that. It's close to that. And you see, it's still standing up. It won't mm -hmm. last long. You see this tree here? See, it's all bent over because mm -hmm. the weight of the Not fruit the bends it down. The weight. See, mine looks more like that. Yeah, that's how they should look. But it, that's not going to be that way for long because that fruit's going to bend, bend it over. And the, you see, nutrient-dense food is heavy. And then you'll let it just keep going like this. Well, I can't help it. What am I going to do? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you won't like it. You got too much. Well, I pruned it all the time. Yeah. It's always pruned. You essentially take off everything that's supposed to go up. Now, now, I see that because there's a big open space there. I'll let that go because I can still reach it. Oh. I, I actually want this tree to grow up, but it's not getting there because of the weight. Yeah. So as stuff goes up, I'm saying, yeah, let's get some elevation here because I need it. <laughs> See, my whole system, you know, everybody's pruning the trees down. I'm pruning my trees up. It's just, it's so different when you have multi, when you have nutrient density. 
I know. This is pretty cool. I bet everyone could just come pick their apple trees without a ladder like that. Yeah. Well, it's convenient. Ladders are not fun. You know, and, and then these trees are so thick you can't even get in them. You're smacking yeah. your face and putting stuff in your eyes. And it's dangerous. Yeah. It's dangerous, you know. Well, this is easy. trees that are not bearing. Is that uh -huh. because of the way that I don't have any of this? They're probably not well. Now, do they bloom? Yes. Okay, if they, if they bloom and they're not bearing, you have a pollination issue. I'm not getting honeybees. Honeybees are not good pollinators. When your trees are blooming, if you're paying attention, it's cold outside. Uh -huh. If you look where your bees are, they're all inside eating honey. Mm -hmm. They're not outside. Mason bees are much better pollinators. Mason bees. You know, honeybees are not native to America. They were brought from Europe really? and they're lousy pollinators. Because our trees are blooming here, way beyond. So can you buy a, ma a package? No, of but if you if you drill holes, you get blocks of wood and drill holes in it. They'll show up. <laughs> okay. See that barn over with all the holes in it? Mm -hmm. Mason be Mason bees just started coming when I built that barn because I had holes for them to live in. And that's what pollinates. See, your native bees have no honey. Yes. Yes. So when something blooms, they're hungry, and they're going to go there because they have no other option. Where honey bees who have honey, they can wait till, for a warm day because they got food at home. It's interesting. It's very interesting if you look at nature. Yeah. So I want to show you all how to graft because I think grafting is really important. Let me tell you why I think grafting is important. For my situation here is that the new apples keep coming on in the world and I have no more room. You can see that. So if I want a new apple, I have to plug into what I have because that's the only option but it's really easy to do. Now, just because we're here, I want to show you, you see that Swiss chard right there? Is anybody growing Swiss chard? No one grows Swiss chard? Yeah, no one? I do. Okay, now, how, rhubarb chard, how, yeah. how's that look? Looks good. You see where it's growing? Mm -hmm. Under my tree, I didn't plant it. A seed blew in, it just started growing. I just want you to get that this is not hard. This doesn't take a lot of effort, and it, it doesn't even need you. It could just seed itself and, and do fine. <laughs> That's never watered, no attention, and it's just doing great. The reason I'm grafting, I want you all to hear me, is if you're paying attention to what's happening on the planet today, with the incredible large amount of pesticides that are used, is the bee, pe bee population in the world is declining at a very scary rate. Are you following me? And what these farmers don't realize is that if you don't have bees, you're not going to have food. You don't have fruit. Yeah. You're not going to have food. Because, mm -mm. I mean, your, your cucumbers have mm -hmm. flowers. They require a bee to pollinate. Yes. And so what, what God's showing me is that by grafting into my trees multiple varieties. You see here I got, I got red and, and yellow um, pears. Mm -hmm. Because they're close, when the wind blows, they'll cross-pollinate. And if bees don't happen, I'm going to have fruit. I love it. It's awesome. So you're putting a pollinator right close onto the tree. Onto the tree. Nice. So it's there. And if the bee doesn't show up with the wind because it's so close, it'll cross pollinate. Right. Now let me show you how to graft because it's, now when you when you look about grafting, read books, they make it really hard. You gotta have these these pins hold all together. You need grafting paste and all this hard stuff. Uh -huh. So I asked the creator about grafting, because I, I find that he knows everything and he's really helpful. He says all you need is a roll of black electrical tape and make sure you buy the cheap stuff from Taiwan because the US stuff is too thick and it won't stretch as well. So the thin stuff from Taiwan is great because it's, 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 it stretches real well. And let me show you how, how easy it is to graph and how to do it because it's very, very simple and easy. The only live part of the tree, I want you all to hear me, the only live part of the tree is the cambium layer below the bark. That's the green part. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. The center part of the tree, the wood, is not living. It's there for support, but it's not alive. And that's why you see trees with cavities, great big holes in them, growing just fine, because the cambium is intact. And, and that's where the life is. So I want you to come over here. I'm going to show you on my pear tree where I've done a lot of grafting and then show you how to do it.
just want to show you a few places here where I grab. Come, come here, right? Oh, you see this? You see right here, this union. You see that's that's a graft. These pairs here are different than the pairs over there, because that was a graft. Here's another graft right here. See that that, that place where it's thick? Uh -huh. That's grafted there. And over here's another one. Now what's amazing me, because I've been pruning trees for almost 50 years, and I know how things grow. I can't believe how fast this stuff is growing. I grafted right here a piece of wood like this right there three years ago. I'm looking at how much wood and how big this is. Three years growth. So here's how you graft. What you're going to graft into, you cut off flat with a saw, make a clean cut. You take your pruners and you cut an opening in the center. An opening. Then you, the cut? In, in the, into, yeah, it. into it, yeah. You want to, okay. so, you can, so you can push into it. Okay. Then the piece you're grafting into, you cut at an angle like this, so you have a, a, a thin Sphere. opening, and okay. you push it in. And here's the beauty of tape. As you wrap with the tape, it pulls everything into alignment, so the cambium is totally in alignment. Because it's wrapped tight with the tape, it's not going to flex or move. Because it's wrapped tight with the tape, it's going to keep all the air out so it doesn't dry out. And because it's black when the sun hits it, it heals quicker because it gets warmer. How important is it for the gauge of the piece you're grafting? Exactly the you same. Want? Exactly the same. Because you have to have the cambium coming in alignment. So they have to be ex exactly the same diameter. You got to have perfect. Because that, you see the green part, and both have to connect for it to make the union. Now let me show you here how, how powerful this is. I grafted under this tree here last April. Oh, is that what that is? <laughs> There's still tape in it. Yeah, and still it tape, yeah. It's sealed over. Yeah. But here's, you're gonna see, here's something you, you can see real clear because the tape's still on, still on. It hasn't even started to grow yet. But what's blowing my mind is I already have fruit. This was done April this year. And you can see the tape. Come, everybody come in because I want you to see this because it's, it's a little give you an idea of how to do this and how cool it is. See the tape right here? So that's a graft. And you see this fruit? You see it's yellow. These, these are red. So this is a whole other variety. And I, this happened in April. I already have fruit. It's just like awesome. Is that just electrical tape? Electrical tape. And it's the real cheap, cheap stuff because that, it stretches nice. So you can really make it tight with that good thick American stuff. It won't stretch. So the, the thin stuff from Taiwan is, is the ideal. Now I want to sh show over here just the intensity of how much you can graft because it's just right behind you here if you look at this tree and you follow these branches back you're going to find tape on almost everything set one on the ground there yeah see the tape right there she's looking at it right there you see this thing is just full of grafts everywhere you see them all you see how cool that is and you don't take the tape off well you don't need to because as a tree grows it just breaks off what i'm getting is that I'm finding that nature's so perfect, if I try to help it, I mess it up. I'm finding at any point, if I try to assist, try to make it better, it's unnecessary, and I usually mess it up. Now here's something that's really blowing me away. I want you to just see the, the numbers here. I'm just... This tree right over here, this is a Mutsu, and I grafted two years ago onto this, you're seeing it right there, all those yellow apples. <laughs> oh yeah. Go over there where he is, You can, because it's just, it's so obvious. You want to go to the That was two years ago? Two years ago. Look at all those apples. Is that amazing? From a graft. Look at that, you can see the tape still there. And look at all those apples. It's so fun. And you see, and see, this is what, what's so awesome is that you can continually keep having new apples on your trees. And then, and, and then the advantage is cross-pollination. So it's, it's just totally plus all the way around. It's just, and then you don't have to pay any money. You know, trees cost 20, 30 bucks. You can get cyan wood for nothing and just plug in and you got the tree. You know, if you don't like it, prune it out and put another one in there. You know, a knife and some tape from Taiwan, and you're off and you're races. good. It's just, I'm telling you, man, it's just, it's so fun, so easy and so simple.
Did you explain over there? I probably didn't hear that it has to be the same. Size. Yeah, you have to make see the cambium. That's that green below. Uh -huh. They have to touch. Uh -huh. And so if they're different sizes, they won't. Cut it just to. The, the, what you're grafting into, you cut flat, and you cut an opening in the center. You cut it, split it. Display. Basically split it. Mm -hmm. And then the piece you're, you're going to graph, you cut at an angle so you have a real, real, real thin opening, you know, end, and you slide into it. Here's the advantage, as you wrap with the tape, that pulls everything into alignment and tight. Takes out all the air, keeps it warm because it's black, and then holds it in place. And then, graph what time of the year? Yeah, the timing is important. You want to cut your wood you're going to graph with when the tree's dormant. And you hold on to that until the sap starts coming in in April, that's when you plug in. You plug in when the sap starts coming in, you start, start seeing buds happening, plug into it. And you know what's so cool? How do you, how do you store it? What's that? How do you store it? Cool, no, you know, if you lay it in the ground where it came from, yeah. it's gonna be cool all winter, it's fine. So A cool place. You just don't want it to dry out. <laughs> so outside, under the tree, is fine. And then when you get ready to graft, just pick it up and plug in. I'll tell you an experience I had here, which blew, blew me away about laying on the ground. This gravity scene over here, one of my neighbors, I mean, one of my clients paid way, much, way too much for this gravity scene tree, and I couldn't figure out why until I ate one. And I thought, whoa, this is an amazing gravity scene. So I cut some sign wood and I grafted it in mine, and I really like it. So I thought, I want to extend this in my other trees. So I cut some sign wood. I didn't have time to walk. I usually put my cooler in the back, so I just left it in the ground. But I forgot about it. So I'm coming back next year, and I'm doing some weeding, and I'm finding these branches I laid on the ground are totally lift, leafed out. They're totally leafed out. They were laying on the ground, but they were attached to the wood chips. They got the life for it, and they were totally growing, laying on the ground because so much life force in the wood chips. Ah, it was incredible. That's amazing. It is amazing. And you see, these are the kind of things you can't argue with. I didn't plan this. I didn't set it up. I wasn't watered this, so I make it happen. I just forgot them, and they're growing. I mean, it was amazing. <laughs> you buy your grafts? Um, no, I just find people, who are, I find good trees. Like if I'm in someone's yard and, and talk about a tree, I ask them, um, can I come by this this winter and, and get get some cuttings from this? Yeah, I pay attention. And then people, see a lot of this stuff, I don't even know what this is yet. I'll, I'll have to find out later what the name is because I don't even know. People just gave me cyanwood, wood, which is fun. It's always discovery. Okay, that's what that is. Now I know, you know, so it's cool. <laughs> Away. Yes. Is this a good one to, uh, now I won't cut that away because look where it is. Yeah, I know. But I'll tell you what I will cut away. Okay. The one underneath it. This one? Yeah. And here's why. See, this is growing up in a space where it's getting full light. It's within my reach. That one is, is going, going under, under back into the tree. Now let me show you how you prune without a tool. See, I have no tool here. I'm going to prune that. Let me show you how. This is really, this is so, so fun. See, when they're small, this is the best time to do it. You take your hand. done and you see you leave no mark no wound and it's gonna heal so it's so easy to, to, to take out stuff when you see when it's little now you see here I'm gonna leave this now because you see this is within my range I can reach and so this is a big open space so I can start developing life in when it gets way beyond yeah. right now you see it, I got a lot of open space here this full, so this just gives me more potential fruit but it's not anybody's way now, would you that one, or would you cut it now that one there because it's inside and it's going to be shaded by that and I can't get get to it later it's going to come out again it's just this I'm in charge yeah. and if this fits for me it's within my comfort zone it stays if it's not we're out of here again it's just you're in charge and so it's you know you have an eye and you know what fits and looks good and makes you happy that's what you work with if it doesn't remove it again just make it c compliant to you to fit with you and make it make you make you satisfied and you're good now you see what's happening with that apple that you got? I found out it. I know. So I want you to do something. You're, you see your shirt there? Rub it on the shirt, the red part. The red part. The part that's red, rub it real good in your shirt. Look how that shines. Is that awesome? That's, how, that's God's wax. God has the awesome, most awesome wax. And you're welcome to eat that. It's not going to be that good, but you, sh you can sure enjoy it if you, if you want to. <laughs> oh, what a nice guy.
my tree that's not getting pollinated and barren apples, it would it would be good to go ahead and maybe oh, this is a do thing. some grass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and what you want to do is get which you surround it and water it and encourage it to pollinate and have fruit. If the fruit's good, work with it. If it's not, get rid of it and plant something that's good. There's no reason having something that's not going to be good. You know, and not all trees are good. Some trees actually go bad. Well, no, the fruit was never good to begin with. So, you know, some varieties I don't like. They're just not good. I don't know. I don't even know why they have them on the market because they're not good. You know, like you know, for instance, like you know, um, yellow transparent. Is a, I don't know why they ever produce that apple. I mean, they they, they have no shelf life. You got to make make them all applesauce in one day, otherwise they're no good. What's up with that? Why do you even have this thing? What is a good apple? Oh, that honey crisp. This 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 is this is a Connie. This one here is is um is Martha's favorite. I mean, every tree in here is awesome, you know. And I got all kinds of grass. I don't know what they are. So there's unlimited good ones. And these will grow down from Ohio. So these will grow in anywhere, anywhere. Okay. Ohio's fine. Now look at that nice kale growing in my orchard. Now everybody, I want you to sample that arugula when you walk. Walk close to it because I got beets just beyond it. On this side I have parsnips. But I want you to go in there and pick one of those big leaves and see how good it is. Everybody. Well, the little flowers yeah, well, that's arugula, which should not be that big. The trees are gone back there. It's yeah, they, but, but you know what? You like it, kind of? I see the sunset every day. Oh, there you go. That's awesome. And then the yeah, skylight at night, and I can see Canada, yeah. and I can see the water. Yeah, and you so know what? a blessing. So, you know, you, know, you know, when that first started happening, I started doing this, <laughs> oh, and then I, then I heard, and everything give thanks. Yes. And I'm seeing, like, this is such an asset. This yeah. is so cool. Yeah. It is beautiful, but I was going, oh, I wonder it, how It changed, but yeah. I like it. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Get get some of that arugula. What's that arugula? Uh, how's it taste to you? The, and you see how big the leaves are compared to the stuff you get at the store. Now you see all the nice kale under my trees over here. Our arugula is the one thing that grew in this. It yeah. Just like yours. Okay. Most of the other stuff didn't, but the, the arugula. Because it's fast. Arugula is fast. fast, yeah, very yeah. fast. Yeah. So I would keep, I would keep planting. I would right now plant carrots and beets and stuff because they'll, they'll and then water real well. Okay, so I just you know flatten it down a bit. You know, flatten it down, make a little groove, plant carrots, beets, you know, um, root vegetables because they'll be fine now for winter. Water well, keep it real wet, yeah. real wet, and they'll be fine. I'll tell my wife because she was ready when to give up. you get your first frost? <laughs> yeah. I don't care. Yeah. I don't even doesn't matter. September tenth is about the time for. I don't for, even care. Uh, now, now for, for me, my last my, so. my last planting here is September 1st. Okay. After that, everything's fine. Okay. The frost has no effect at all on my plants. Okay, so None. I can plant, I should be planting now. Yes, for, for winter. For winter. So okay. when we, get to my we, don't, we don't freeze down inches into the soil. But, though, like but the wood body. chips don't freeze down That's in the soil. They don't. It's an insulator. Yeah. And they can expand. Let me, let, we're talking about cold weather and about, you know, frost and that kind of thing. I want you all to hear me. At 40 below zero in Canada, 40 below zero in Canada, that happens every year. Way up there. Way up there. All the animals, all the birds, now the bear takes a nap, but all the rest of them are eating all winter in that environment. Nothing dies in the forest, but in everybody's farm next to the forest with exposed dirt, everything dies. Get it. This is an insulator, big time. This insulates the roots and protects the plants. The cold doesn't hurt them because this is a covering. It works. Anybody growing zucchini? Yeah, we are. Come, come check out these zucchini and talk to me about what they look like to you. Look at that foliage. Look at those flowers. You want that uh, camera moved? No, I can walk around it. What does that look like to you, those zucchinis? Mine got, got like a powdery stuff on them. This is called right powdery mildew. Mm. It's, a, it's a fungi. It's my first, my it's, first it's, year growing it's, it's, a, it's a fungus. 
And why, why did they get them? Because they weren't well. No. You see, you see any powdery mildew on these? I don't know about you, but this gets by, I mean, I've never had zucchini with leaves like that, ever. Look at the size of those things. And it's a young plant, it's not even started growing yet. And it's growing under my trees, in the orchard. <laughs> I want you to get it, it's, it is awesome. Look at that. I mean, in, in commercial organic farms, they have nothing comparable to this. And this is where they're tilling and fertilizing and watering and killing themselves. And I stuck a few seeds around and walked off. And I get this. I'm just telling you, man, this is awesome. It doesn't get better. It's just like, I'm just like, you God, this is so cool. Like, really? That is a big stem. Yeah, and it's a baby plant. It's just starting out. Does anybody know how good those flowers are to eat? <laughs> They're awesome. Has anybody not had one before? Pick one of these flowers and eat it because they're really good. Right here's one. That yellow flower. Just snap it off the end. Yeah, just snap the flower off the end. And eat. Oh, the whole thing. Get the whole flower. Because it's really good. You, you can get the rest of it. Okay. Come, come get the rest of it because it's really good. Just snap that flower off the end. There you go. Eat that. Just see how good. You'd be amazed at how delicious that is. It's really good. Wow. Isn't that good? That's good. I've never ate a flower before. But it's mm -hmm. good, man. Today's that day. Are those watermelons? Yep. Uh huh. So if you carried all your brushes, far there's a there's a wagon there. You can dump it in there. Thank you. Now, I want you to, to notice this parsley here. Does parsley, does parsley get any greener than that? Look at the color of that. Now, pick, 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 a, you know, pick a piece of it, you know, break it off of the stem, because I want you to see the stem's really good, and just check out the flavor, because it's amazing. Do you get any bears around here? Yeah, we have black bear. I raised, I raised the largest bear in Washington State history. You were raised. <laughs> I took three wheelbarrow loads every night out to the woods to feed it because I wanted, I wanted to break in my trees. Oh, okay. And I went, then I went to my neighbor's, hu neighbor's house and destroyed all his honey and they caught it. 470 pounds. Wow. And I raised it here since it was a baby, eating my food. But he left your trees alone. He didn't. I would oh. take the apples to him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because if I didn't, he'd take my trees out. Take so I'm taking three wheelbarrow loads every night out to the woods and he's eating that much. But you know, I think even growing this way, well, like no, it's easy right. for them to get, right? They're not pulling <laughs> yeah, the branches right. mm -hmm. down yeah. and breaking the mm -hmm. branches off. Mm -hmm. Now be careful where you're walking because right behind you is lettuce coming up. And over there is cilantro there. Oh, and that's that spinach. One? Oh. What's that one at the, the third Spinach. One? That, that, that spinach over there. Now, while you're here, you can walk in between my carrots over there and pull them and eat them because they're really good. And then I want you to notice when you pull the carrot, to pay attention to the odor that you don't get from organic carrots. And here's the reality. In 10 minutes, hear me, in 10 minutes after fruits and vegetables are picked, they can lose up to 80% of metabolic properties. When you pull those carrots, you're gonna smell something you've never smelled before because it's live. And that's when you should eat it. If you grow too much to eat, say within to the 10 minutes, mm -hmm. if you grow, you got abundance. Chickens. Yeah. I, if, besides that, chickens. What about dehydrating? Dehydrating, the dehydrating is so good. The worst way to store food is canning. When you can like food, you lose 95% of the food value when you can food, 95% of the food. Because here's why. You bring it to high temperature and all the food values in the water you pour off. Are you hearing me? Where when you dry food, all you're losing is water. Everything's still there. So it preserves all those nutrients. 95% gained by drying. And here's what's cool. If you live in California, all you need is a car. Roll the windows up, put it in the back seat, and you're good. Yeah. It'll dehydrate just fine. I'm serious. Because I just harvested all my carrots and I dehydrated what yeah. we didn't eat. I live in Arizona. And, uh, my husband now, I, I want, minutes. We now watch that. Wa minutes. Everybody watch the, do the dog. She's pulling, she's going to pull a carrot up and eat it. Watch that. 
Oh, she she she, she will. She does it all. Ever dehydrated? What about blanching? Is it is it necessary? Do you know? Blanching? Before like they say that you have to break the cell walls so it dehydrates, right? To blanch carrots. Do you see in nature anybody breaking cell walls? No. So no. Okay. Look at nature. All right. No one's doing that stuff, and everything's fine. Yeah, you said that for... Now, I, I are, you, are you getting that odor? Oh, yeah, that's I exactly it, what I, I came see. for. It's amazing. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> it is, it is. You see, in a store-bought organic carrot, there's no odor. So something is not there. You lost something. Right. This is why this picking and eating is the only way to live. And Paul, again, you're not thinning them. Well, why should I? <laughs> I mean, when you thin, you're taking away from what you planted and you paid for. What's up with that? I like your answer last year better. What? And that is, your soil is so awesome, it just pushes each other out. Well, it's so soft, they can, yeah. That's what I'm saying, I like that one. It's true. Carla, I want that to stay on you so that you're not going to get burned. I don't know. I've got sunscreen on you, but that's too hot. Come up. So all these carrot tops you can put in the wagon over here. Please don't put them on the, on the, on the ground. Do you still have your chickens, Paul? Yeah, that's oh. where we're going there next. That's what I thought. Our little pile here is for the chickens. Yeah, we, there's a wagon there. We can put it all in there. Michael, taste the... We're gonna, is anybody here Michael. growing rice in their garden? Yeah, can you believe it? You can put that in your salad. I know. Is it unreal? Anybody growing rice in their garden? No. Why not? Because it's a lot of water. Not water. Oh, really? You have to have a ball. Um, I have rice right down there. <gasps> you did it this year? Yep. <laughs> I'm growing rice in my wood chips and I didn't water it, it rained. Yeah. You threatened to do it. I finally found some, some cool person in. Um, uh, Costa Rica sent me some seed because all the organic um, rice in the store has been, high, been um, radiated and won't germinate. Uh, Isn't that scary? All your food, scary. organic food that you buy is radiated. It won't germinate. It's supposed to be sweet. That's how it was made. I can. So while you're out there, sample some of that kale because it's really good. All kinds of kales in there. It's about five varieties. And all of this you give to the chicken? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is tasting like in my grandma's yard. See now, isn't that good? Did you hear uh, Listen, everybody hear me. This woman just made a really cool comment. She says, this is tasting like it did in my grandmother's yard. Mm -hmm. And I want you to get that this culture doesn't even know what food tastes like. Mm -hmm. I'm serious. Yeah, it's, you see, chemical, chemical fertilizers destroyed all of our food. And her grandmother's yard was, was before the chemical fertilizers. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Thank you. That was such a, was such a good observation. Does anybody have a water bottle they want filled? We're at a place right now where you have the potential of getting the coldest, most delicious water on the planet. But somebody's going to have to work a bit because my water is 130 feet down and you got to lift it for 130 feet. But when you get it, it's going to be the best. So if somebody's up to it, you can start pumping and then get all your water bottles out because this, this is going to be totally cold. I mean, really cold, delicious water. It's going to make your day. He's lifting water 130 feet. This is here because if the power goes out, I got to have water. When the power fails, mm -hmm. if you don't have a hand pump, you're not going to have water. How many feet? I want one on 
hours. Oh, okay. Pay attention what you're saying. <laughs> and you know what I did here? You see at the bottom of that? I, I, I created a, a hose thread so I can run a hose to my house so I don't have to carry the water. It's a, it's 130 feet. 130 feet is a long ways. And see, he's lifting water 130 feet. Is that your second well? This is the second well. This this water here is, is this is a well, 130 feet, 20 gallons a minute. It's the most awesome water on the planet. It's so good. He's just about there. It's coming. No, now he's, you know, he's almost there. You, you don't want to stop now. You know? How did I get in on this? <laughs> now, now this, is, this, is, this is where you get upper body exercise. You get your, you get your, you get your blood going through your veins so they don't create you know, hardening of the arteries. And this is good for us. Let him take over. Let this young guy take over. There it is. <laughs> Poor guy, you were just there. Let him fill that cup up. Now check out that the flavor and the and the temperature of that water. It's so awesome. Is that good water? That was almost worth it, huh? Almost. What did you find to miss this sprinkler thing here? Drink that water while it's cold because it's so good cold. Thank you, sir. So excited to be here. We couldn't wait to get here for the second time. Oh, thank so you. Ex- we watch you over and over. Oh. Our garden is turning into Paul's garden. Awesome. We're doing everything like you. <laughs> it works. It works. Yeah. Hi, hi. Did you get water? I did. Okay. Mm-hmm. I have a question. Yes. Um, I've, uh, before I moved from here to uh, Arizona, they were uh. talking about Zoodoo. Mm-hmm. Do you recommend getting that? Or? What is it? Someone said they... They give the animals antibiotics and stuff, and that'll be in the zoo. Yes, don't don't get it. All your animal products today are full of growth hormones and antibiotics. It's not safe to eat. All your dairy, all your meat is corrupted. It's just, it's just, it's sad. Everything's been changed. You know, it's not how it used to be. Plus, all the zoo animals are in cages, standing in their own manure, and so they have to be medicated to ward off everything because of that. Antibiotics. So then they pile up the manure, and then you take it and put it on your garden, and then you're getting all, the all that. All that. The... Let me tell you about manure. This guy's talking about you know zoo animals because of all the the toxic you know um, uh, pills are given to, to deal with the disease. In Mother News here a few years ago, there's an article about this poor family in the Midwest who've been growing a garden in this spot for like decades, a good garden. And they went and got this cow manure and they tilled it in. Nothing grew. They found out that the farmer had sprayed 2,4-D Agent Orange over the pasture to get rid of all the broadleaf weeds. It was in the manure and totally took out their entire garden. We, you know, you got it. this is what I like about wood chips. Wood chips are clean. Manures, you got to know what the animals ate because they may not be good for your soil. Um, went on a road trip from here all the way to New York City and all the way through the map, Nebraska, all the cornfields they were growing at that time, they had that GO, GMO sign. Mm-hmm. All the corn in Nebraska is GMO. Yeah. I didn't know if you knew that. You know what genetically modified organisms are? They're, affronted, they're on a front against the Creator because it's uncreating what God created. It's all poisonous. And it's not sustainable because GMO plants do not produce seed after their own kind. And once you're there, you're totally dependent on who produces the seed. And it's deadly. It's totally deadly. And nothing in nature, no animal in nature eats genetically modified corn. Only domesticated cows do. And domesticated chickens because nothing in nature knows, I mean everything in nature knows that it's poison and unsafe to eat. Is this a new pepper? 
puppy? This is a new puppy. Oh, because I thought the other one was a new puppy. No, the other one's an old dog, oh. and she's a sweet dog, but she's not a good deer repellent. Yeah, she's not like your other one. This one here is a Labrador, oh. and shes I feel so thankful for her. She is a very, very unusual breed. You never see a Labrador that color. Yeah, I was gonna They're say usually like golden, chocolate. chocolate, or black. This is a red fox Labrador. And I'm telling you, she is smart, and I'm just, I, you know, I'm already, she's not even that big, and the deer damage from my orchard has dr dropped off significantly. It's just awesome. Did you have to get her far, far away? Yeah, the guy who raised me lives, lives in front of Mount St. Helens. Oh. And what was so cool about him, because my wife is kind of outgoing and pretty expressive, and he allowed her to get pick of the litter. Oh, wow. She was the biggest, smartest, without a question, of every female in that litter. Was, she came up 16. But she was like with over the top the best, and, and so. And you wanted a female, not a male. Because males hike on your plants and pee, yeah. and and they and they. And you know what's awesome about dogs, is that that Labrador, I mean that that golden retriever, has never defecated anywhere in my yard for her whole 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 life here. I have no idea where she does, but she is smart <laughs> and she knows how to please, and she's teaching this dog how to do it. And I'm feeling, I'm telling you, I, I find no, none of her poop anywhere because I'm feeling so thankful because it's a hassle. I have to pick up poop all the time. And it just doesn't happen because this was learning from the other one how to do it invisibly. Huh? Are your neighbors still talking to you? No, I have a lot of woods back here. Yeah. You know, this is, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of space that I don't see. And, uh, but I, just, I feel so thankful. You know, it's, just, it's just awesome. It's so good. You talked about your water and I didn't hear everything. You said you got it from the glacier, is it? Yeah, this, this is coming from the glaciers in the Olympics up there. And what I have here is the most amazing arrangement on the planet. Do you, have, you have some time? I want to share with you a testimony that's huge. When I bought this property in 1976, I got this five acres with that mountain view for $12,500, which was very cheap then. And I found out why. Up here, water was a real challenge to find. You had wells ranging anywhere from 40 to 300 feet, no volume, hardly any water. So when I came to that realization, fear rose up. You know, fear, like, what do I do? I got to get water. I want to go 300 feet. And so I hired a Seventh-day Adventist, because I knew it wasn't demonic, to douse for me. Okay? I knew it wasn't going to be, be, be evil, you know? But I was motivated by fear, and in, 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 in Romans it says, whatever's not of faith is sin. I love the Bible. It just doesn't leave it. Whatever's not of faith is sin. Fear is sin. And so, I, so he's out here, and he dows. We get a well back there, 213 feet, half a gallon a minute, no water. Half a gallon a minute is barely going to support a home, much less a garden. And so that's when the Creator showed me how to go trees without water, so it was really cool. So 12 years later, the economy had really fallen. Everybody's, no one's building houses, and the well drill had gone from $20 a foot down to 14. I says, Carol, let's drill a well. Let's just pray and ask God to lead the well driller where a good well is. We may not be able to put a pump in it, but it's not gonna get cheaper, let's just go, go for it. So we sat at a table, we repented, and God told my wife, you're gonna get a well 130 feet, 20 gallons a minute. She tells me this, this is, you're crazy. That's, that's 40 times the volume, you know, half the depth. He says, I heard 130 feet, 20 gallons a minute. I know what I heard. That's what he told me. So she's holding on to it. She's in, she's in, um, she's in a birth center in um, Texas. And I went, when the well drill showed up, I left because, you know, when you go to the casino, you can leave when you're losing money. When you're drilling a well, you can't. And you're watching your dollars go down this hole and you have no guarantees. So I'm out of here. So I come back and my neighbor says, you should call the guy. He's only here for about... You know, four hours. Now, this guy's an agnostic. He's a scientist. He doesn't believe in a creator. He says, you know, an interesting day at your place. When we start drilling in this kind of a space, we don't start looking for water until we hit 150 feet. At 150 feet, we start paying attention. He says, I'm going through all this blue clay. It's all blue clay is all you have here. At 130 feet, I started hitting boulders. I'm not talking about gravel. I'm talking about large-sized rocks. And he says, something inside, I'm quoting him, something inside me says, give it a surge. He says, I gave it a surge. And this, this four-inch four pipe went limp with water coming out. Wow. And he says, he was in total shock. He went back down again, and in five feet he's back in blue clay. You, you have something I've never seen before. You have an underground river surrounded by blue, blue clay in a rock formation five feet deep. Wow. And you see that casing coming out of the ground over there? It's three feet above the ground. If the well report reads, 133 feet, 20 gallons a minute. Wow. Now let me tell you something what's awesome about my creator. 
When I was thanking him for this well, you know what he told me? He says, Paul, that water is always there for you, but I wanted you to learn a few things first. And here's what's awesome. I want you to hear, hear this. God used my failure, my sin, my fear, to create a platform for me to impact the whole world. And then he gives me this well. I love it. You see, had I had this well up front, you wouldn't be here today, and I wouldn't be having a garden, because I'd still be telling, and I couldn't anymore. So I so love my Creator. He calls those things that are not as though they are. He takes a failure and he makes it a success because he can. And it's just so awesome. <laughs> and I wouldn't be having potatoes grow in my mouth. <laughs> it, it's awesome. And I get so blessed. I mean, people all over the world are, just, are getting this, they're getting amazing gardens, they're getting well. And it's because I made a mistake. <laughs> I was in fear. But I repented, and I get to do this. It's just, it's so cool. <laughs> it's awesome. So I, I, I always say, God is so fun to work with. <laughs> Paul, thank you ever so much. You're, you're so welcome. Well, you could go if you want, but we're not done because we'll go to the herb garden. And I want you to, I want you to taste the rest of some of my food over here, and I want you to see my rice, because I got cool rice growing. I've got a question about your corn. Mm -hmm. My corn are 14 feet tall right now, mm -hmm. just putting on a top tassel. No, no corn. corn coming out the shoot, you know, off, out the stalk. Yeah. But yours are what? Look at them. Five feet tall. And look at all. The, but, and they but, got he, big but here's why. Them. This, where you live and I live, is a cool climate. Right. Corn doesn't do well here. No. So this is a variety called spring corn. Spring corn. And it's made for 60 days. It's going to produce, and it produces awesome. You can just see how beautiful that is, and it's abundant, and it's not huge stalks. I don't have no. a whole, whole lot of stuff to deal well, with. like this big around? I'm, I'm just, look at that. Look at that. Small, <laughs> and look at the beautiful ears already happening. And they're going to be awesome. And it never I gets to the house shocked. because I eat I it. Shocked. I eat it right here because it's so tender and good. Yes. It's I awesome. I went into tears looking at it. <laughs> so remember the, remember the word. Organic heirloom corn. Remember the, bandit. remember Okay. You go to Fedco and you get spring Fedco. corn. Spring corn. Remember the word spring and okay. you buy spring corn and that's what it is. It's right. awesome. I will. Oh, fun. I, I just could not believe it when I saw your corn. Isn't that awesome? And I have these mammoth yeah. things doing nothing. Yeah. Well, because they're, 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 they're like made from growing in the Midwest and it's not that hot here. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's a cool climate, so you have to, um, you have to adjust, to, adjust to where you live. Yeah. So but that I, corn there gets amazing beautiful ears totally full and the i never it never gets to the house it, i bite into it and I get wet because it's just so full of water and it's so sweet it's just like cook over the, why cook it man yeah. it's so tender and sweet it's so good That's what I did as a kid. oh shoot <laughs> um i gotta get that i'm gonna get that wagon Do you want me to get it yeah out? no not you oh, yeah because you you're, you're walking like i am and i want you to i am i had, I had surgery oh, and you know what i learned what by garden, I I don't have to use this cane awesome. so much. But if I go to shopping, and then I'm you on use hard it. concrete. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Right. Thank you. Right. But the I was the garden. medium that you got yeah. in these bits. What's here. that? What is the medium called? Which? It's kind of like you know my bark mulch looks like that. Oh, this this is screen wood chips. Screen See, chips. I screen it. I take those wood chips there and I run it through a screen, and then you get the fine material. Oh. So all the heavy stuff goes so out in the orchard. The, the old comp, like you've got a darker compost yeah. pile over yeah. there. Yeah, you know why it's dark? Because it was in a big pile and got hot. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's what mine is. Like yeah. It steamed off yeah. first. And, and, that, and the heat, yeah. you know, turns it black. Yeah, oh, okay. So just screen it. So pick pick this, because this, this kale is really good. Ha, everybody have some kale. Because you, usually the kale's bitter, and this isn't. Thank you. You saw it in the wagon. Yeah. Isn't that good, Akil? And they're all different. They're all different. What, what's that? La Sonato. La Sonato. It's called, also called dinosaur and Tuscan. No, this red one. That's 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 La Sonato. Yeah, it is. It's 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 called rain. It's called rainbow lasnado. Oh, okay, okay. mm. 
kale is such good food. It's really good for you. So you also put your chicken manure on this part of the... What I do is I take my chicken manure, it's not manure, it's like compost, and in the fall, I'll put a light covering over it all and I'll put the wood chips over it. So I just sandwich it underneath. Because the wood chips make a much nicer you know, material to walk on. And I find they also, um, the weeds don't develop as much. In my, in my compost over there, the weeds just love, love growing in it. Because it's, you know, so viable. Now everybody here, come down here and pick some of that broccoli and just see how good it is. Mm, it's good. Mm. You did? Isn't that good? And it's gone to flower. And it's so good. You know what I have to do now? I have to come here every week and cut out all this stuff that's gone to flower because I can't possibly keep up eating it because it's producing so much. We got all that 90 degree weather mm. oh, at the end of April and May and my broccoli shot to seed so I cut it real quick and my husband and I tried to eat it. It was so bitter. Because it wasn't well. Could you do me a favor while you're there? You see that, that plant that's uprooted right, here, right in front of you here? I just bring it to me. Get a big, get a big piece. Big piece. Yeah, break that off down to the bottom and see how tender, how tender, the um, the the stem is. Start the stem and see how tender that is, because you're gonna you're gonna blow your mind. How tender it is. I mean, let's go a little further. There we go. Is that good? It's not even better. It's not supposed to be. The creator didn't Mine was make so because it was not well. It was struggling. You see all these cucumbers coming on here? It's going to be awesome. All this amazing, look at all these flowers, these cucumbers are coming on. Now everybody, you see this grass right here in my lawn, in my um, garden? That's rice. That's rice there. Right here. had someone send that? Someone, some, because I couldn't find seed and, and my good friend, that nub, excuse me. <laughs> um, he, he photographed me saying, I can't get seed. And some cool guy in um, Costa Rica sent me this, this rice seed, and there it is growing. Wow. Nice. So go down there and pick some cilantro. It's starting to bolt, but it's, you can snap off the top part that's bolting and just see how good it is because it's really delicious. This cilantro, you've never had cilantro taste like that. It's so good. Go down toward the end where it's really thick. You can break off that top piece that's, that's going to seed, and you'll blow your mind how good it is. That's carrots for winter. Oh. So you got two rows of carrots for the winter. Isn't that good? Now, you, now who, who... It's not supposed to be. Didn't you hear me yet? I keep losing all my food. I'm doing, no, I, I, I hear you. I hear you. Now, 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 now for those of you, who, those of you who... Ha, you, you see all these, you see these carrots coming up? This is for winter. This will grow all you know all summer long, and in the winter, I have awesome carrots all winter long. Because it'll so actually, just leave them in the they get when the ground freezes, they get sweeter. So my winter carrots are far that's better tasting than the, than the summer the ones. They're so that much. Does that work with one? every root? All root vegetables. So that's why all, always always be, I got beets planted everywhere for winter because it's so good. And see, all winter long you have this live food, which is you know. See, I never go to the store ever any time of year because my garden produces everything. Oh wait. Peas, I, they'll grow in the snow, won't they? Peas are pretty, pretty hardy. You can plant them in mm -hmm. February when it's really cold, and, and they're just hardy. They don't last long, but they're very hardy. Now, does anybody have soil they think is impossible to work with? Like, you know, hard clay or rocks? Mm -hmm. Anybody? <laughs> Nobody? Because if, if you think you've got hard stuff to deal with, I want you to go behind my house right here and look at my soil. My soil is, you can't break with a pick. And I want you to get that everything you're eating from here has that under it. And when I put the wood chips on, on it, it changed everything. It's really powerful. The wood chips change it all. It's just so significant. So we'll go over here to the herb garden. As we're headed there and I'm slow, you can take your time, go along the fence and that row of, um, a hedge of blueberries, they're starting to get ripe. So when they're, re they're really dark blue, pick them. Yeah. 
Don't get the ones that aren't because they're not good, but the ones that are dark blue are really good. I can pull, it's okay, thank you. It's bad there's more food value in that cart than there is in the whole grocery store. <laughs> well, I know. <laughs> and you're gonna see my chickens in a minute, just really get onto it. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you'd like though, if you could just take this and, and take it up to that fence, you know, the gate to the chicken pen, that would, that would make it easier for me. Thanks so much. Thank you, thanks so much for your help. Um, last year. No, a year before last. Yeah. Really? Yep. Yeah. It, well, it needed it. <laughs> After, what, 50 years? Well, it's been, it's been painted once before, but, you know, the metal was starting to show up, and I want, I want that truck to last, so, right. you know, paint is, paint is basically a preservative, you know. Tell them about uh, how famous your truck is now. What's that? You got a picture somewhere? Do I have a picture? Of your truck? No. In the calendar? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah but that's that count that that dates over now. Oh, it's still famous. Yeah, yeah. The, there's a, there's a, uh, I got my steering box rebuilt. It was so cool. The people who did it took a picture of my truck and put it in their calendar. It's a redhead steering. That is so awesome. That's so my, my truck is like brand new. I've never had steering this tight. It is so awesome, man. It's just like right there. It's like I've always been doing this, like you know. Cause it's always been i've always gotten worn out steering boxes and i found this company who rebuilds them and it's just like oh man totally changed my life it is so good well their tolerances on machining are so tight, or tight yeah now. yeah oh. well it's just you know when you have a million miles on something you know some things things wear out just a few. <laughs> and that that doesn't have power steering so you're really cranking on it uh, so by armstrong. yeah so it's so it's um it, it, the gears get worked on yeah Yeah, because everything that can break, I, I have a lifetime warranty, so I don't have to buy them, buy them anymore. The only thing I have to pay for on that truck are tires. Yeah, J.C. Penney's made a fatal mistake. They sold me a lifetime warranty battery in 1974 for $50, and now they're paying $140 for them. The last time I went, it was so because the cashiers have no idea what is this because they never saw it before, you know. So the manager comes and he's got this kind of like not happy look on his face. He says, "Can I buy you out?" And I says, "No." <laughs> I, I, I says, "This is your idea. You put the sign up. This is your commitment, and I'm just yeah. going to hold you to it." And so thank you. When you're 100 years old, you're still going to be going and getting batteries. Yeah, <laughs> because my truck will still be running. <laughs> you know what's interesting about that truck? The army did a thing over here where they took out the grid, Is there a, a test thing, and everybody's calling the car manufacturer and says, we can't open our car, we're pressing the button, nothing works. And I says, yeah, we've got calls, the army's doing something over there. And so people don't realize is that when it all shuts down, my truck will be the only thing rolling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because there's nothing, no computer anywhere on that. My wife always says, keep gas in your truck, <laughs> because you might be the only one, only one moving, you know. Because all these new cars are all computerized, and they and they're com com completely be stopped by the the grid being taken out. Yeah. Well, you have two gas tanks in there, right? Yep, I have I have a, I have a 500 uh, let's see a 600 mile range of that truck. And how many reverses do you have? I have two speed reverse, four, eight speed forward. And the extended frame to me is priceless. <laughs> Yeah, and you see, ha and having and having that toolbox behind the bed, the original bed, is so convenient. Oh, yeah. 
all your tools. And then that elongated frame, it's just, it's so awesome, you know, it's just like, ugh. that truck is just so unique. It's like the only one in the world. And even in this day, if you read the insignia on the side, it says job rated. Right. Below, this little decal says custom Regal. They only made 300 of them. If you look at the truck, the windows are wrap around. No truck that age, they're all flat in the back. This thing are wrap around windows. I mean, it's, it's like a totally rare breed. Aren't those blueberries good? Now, I, wa I want to show you guys something interesting here. If you don't, don't know about tomatoes, there's two types of tomatoes. They're called determinate and indeterminate. Those are, those are indeterminate, and you can see they're just growing everywhere. And you see this little tiny thing by the, by the building up here? That's determinate. You see how small that plant is and it's full of tomatoes ripe? That's the difference. T determinate are so convenient to work with because they don't grow like crazy and they produce a lot of fruit. But because this variety is my favorite, it's, it's called the Sun Gold, I put up with the indeterminate all over the place. <laughs> Now, does anybody, um, any herb, herb people here? People like do herbs? Thyme. Right there. Be very careful when you taste it because it's going to totally blow you away because it's so potent. But I want, no, tiny piece because that's going to, that's good. Okay. Yeah, you'll see. You'll see. Yeah, look how potent. Everybody, I want you to get how potent it is. No thyme you've ever bought in the store. It's like that. Last, last week, I had a naturopathic doctor came here who has been all over the United States going to herb farms because she treats with herbs. And her frustration is, everywhere I go, the quality is terrible. And she's really frustrated. She came here last week. Very tiny piece. And she saw over here at the corner of, my, of, of that fence is a woman's herb called black cohosh. And you can see the beautiful white flowers at the top. She says, I have never in my life seen black cohosh this big and so vibrant in any herb garden. And that plant's only two years old. You know what's cool about it? Black cohosh only grows in full shade. That is in full sun, south facing. Yeah, that's black cohosh. And it's supposed to grow in full shade. The lady was totally blown away. She, she could not believe, she says, I've been to herb farms. I've never, ever seen this. So to take that away, get a piece of, get some of those onion chives there because they're sweeter. Because it's not warm enough here to grow outside. And you see the glass, you know, um, keeps it warm. Yeah. I took the roof off so I get, I get sun, yeah. but I don't, I, um... So you only keep the sides and not the... Not the, the reason, uh, let's talk about this greenhouse, everybody. Do you have a minute? Because this is, I want, this is very important, I want you to hear. Is that you don't realize what's happened to your food. Back in the 50s, when I grew up in Los Angeles, so I come from a Swiss German culture, my skin is light. And when I get in the sun, I burn. And I used to go to the beach every, every, every day in the summertime to surf. And I, I'd be peeling all summer long. Totally peeling my skin off. Because I'm light skin. Back in the 50s, skin cancer did not, did not exist. There was no such thing. Because back in the 50s, everyone ate tomatoes that were growing outside in full sun. Everyone. There were no greenhouses. And here's why. They tested a sun-ripened tomato. You know what they found? 300 phytochemicals in a sun-ripened tomato. Now, let me explain why. You look at a tomato skin. It's beautiful, smooth, gorgeous, no bumps. I mean, any woman would give anything for skin that nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, be real. Tomato skins are beautiful. Why doesn't it blister? It's getting 100 degrees sun blazing on it, full blast, and it stays totally smooth because it has a phytochemical that protects it from blistering. They took a same heirloom tomato and grew it in a greenhouse, you know what they found? 50 phytochemicals. 250 were lost with light going through glass because it interrupts photosynthesis. Today in Seattle where there's no sun, people have skin cancer. 
skin cancer is worldwide because all tomatoes today are grown in greenhouses and they no longer provide the protection the creator made for them and here's and here i want you to hear me everybody follow me when do tomatoes get ripe when what time of year August, September, when the sun's the hottest. You think that's a coincidence, an accident? And in cool climates where there's no sun, tomatoes don't grow because you don't need them. The Creator made everything so perfect. It's awesome. It's totally awesome. And this is the whole concept of why you should eat food fresh in season, period. When shush shows up is when you're supposed to eat it. When it's not there, you shouldn't. Here's why you shouldn't eat tomatoes. When they're not there, they're a nightshade. They're not good for you. And people in our culture, I always tell, tell you, you affluent people, you live really boring lives. Because you buy the same garbage in the store every week and it's really terrible. And that's all you know. And so affluent people are buying tomatoes in January when there's no sun. And they have no flavor, they're totally gross, and they're paying big dollars for them. What's the point? They're not good for you, they don't taste good, and you don't need them. And you're buying them yeah. out of season. Yeah. It's totally stupid. It I mean, really. <laughs> so, I, has anybody ever been to a chicken pen? Yes. If you go to commercial chicken pens, they stink. I want you to notice this one doesn't. And when you come to chicken pens, the chickens run up to you because they think you have something to them and they're hungry. You notice my chickens, they'll ignore you because they're satisfied. Now I want to show you, you're going to watch my chickens here now just come into like the most awesome moment of their life. Because I'm going to take this wheelbarrow of nutrient dense live food, this wagon, and totally bless them. In, in the chicken pen? No, that's a wooden floor. Yeah. And I have wood chips over it. Yeah. And you just let it go, right? You know what's awesome about that? If you go in there, if you go into chicken pens, the ammonia will choke you. Yeah. If you walk in there, there's no odor at all. Huh. And you see, because the wood chips are there, as they defecate in it and they homogenize it into the wood chips, you can't even find it. And that material, track with me. There's no rain leaching it out. There's no weed seeds in it. That is the most amazing soil for my garden. Are you starting to are you starting to get all the assets? That I, and you see over here, this is this is like two feet deep of the most amazing black gorgeous compost. It all comes from my yard waste that they compost. So this wooden floor. Wooden floor. Wooden plywood wooden floor. And and it'll never change. It it I do it every, about every 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 year. I take it out. And, and because the cover's there, the, the floor's never hurt, there's no compaction, and there's no odor. Yes. The, oh, the wasabi. Oh, yeah. I'm growing wasabi in front of my blueberries. You know where wasabi grows in nature? In standing water in full shade only. And you know what I've done? If you look over here in front of my wasabi, there's sage growing. You see that, that little bush on there, multicolored? That's sage. You know where sage grows? In deserts with no water. And I'm growing them side by side to show you that in nature there's no issues. Here's the, here's the other thing that's cool. You see that lavender right there behind you? Right here, right here behind that lavender? You know what lavender is? pH? Alkaline very high alkaline. You see the blueberry next to it? You know what that pH is? It's acid. And I want you to see they're growing side by side because in this environment the pH is 7.0. Perfect center. And at center, everybody's happy. What I'm getting is that this system is so well designed. This the creator told me about the wasabi because I couldn't figure out how I could grow side by side two opposites. You know what he told me? He says there's enough airspace in the wood chips for the sage to hang out in the open spaces and avoid the water. But if the wasabi wants the water, it, go where it, is, it can go where it is, but they have the option. And what I saw was, in this environment, everything is there and the plants can choose. 
It's so powerful. The textbook tells you that uh, blueberries need acid. acid. Yeah. That's what I'm telling you. And what I want to show you with your eyes seeing it, <coughs> blueberries are growing right next to my lavender, which <laughs> says it has to be alkaline. That doesn't make sense. It makes sense because we got lied to in the textbooks. <laughs> the textbooks are all liars. You know why? Let me give you the spiritual reason why everything you read in textbooks are lies. Who's the God of this world? Who's he the father of? Get it. I'm being serious. Connect the dots. If he's in charge of this whole system, everything you're getting from the school system are lies. And you know the Bible? The Bible refers to the school system, both public school, lower, you know, the, the lower grades and higher education. In the first chapter of Psalms, here's how it goes. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. That's public education. <laughs> nor stands in the way of sinners. Nor sits in the seat of the scornful. That's higher education. Every university scorns and downgrades God and His Word. Every one of them. And God says, you don't go there. But your delight is in the law of the Lord. His Word and His law, He meditates there. And here's the result. You'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth His fruit in His season. And I love this last part. And whatever you do will prosper. That is, the, that is the recipe for success. If you're connected to God's Word and you're thinking about it, whatever you do is going to work. And here's the insanity of higher education. I'm speaking insanity with uppercase letters. The people teaching in, in universities are not good at what they're doing, otherwise they'd be doing it because they make far more money doing than talking about it. I'm being real. And so you're paying money to learn from novices. Where if you look at human history, from the beginning of time, people who are good learn from masters. They found a master and they apprentice and work with them and that was their credential. Oh, you learn from so-and-so, oh, you're going to be good because they were. And if you look at scripture, Moses mentored Joshua. Jesus mentored 11 disciples. Paul mentored Timothy and Titus. I mean, mentoring is the best way to learn because the master's showing you how to do it. He's not talking about it. He's showing, he's demonstrating it. And you're learning because you're seeing it. It's so powerful. And it makes such sense. I had a young woman come here from um, North Carolina. She was, and she, she calls me on the phone and says, can I come out and learn from you? I says, yeah, you can come here. So out in the garden weeding, she says, you know, I'm having a really hard time trying to figure out what school to go to. I says, the reason you're having a hard time is because you shouldn't go. <laughs> she says, what? It's a waste of your time and money. You shouldn't go there. And so I explained to her, you want to learn from a master. I says, well, how do you, this is, you find what you want to do and you find something good and you go follow them. I'm going to show you. So I took her behind my house and says, I want to show you how to prune a tree. So I have this vine maple and it's taking my window out upstairs. So I says, I want you to watch how I change this. So I, took, I cut a branch off and I took my prunes and I whacked all the ends off. As you see how this looks? That's how all the people who go to college prune trees. This is your right. That's how they look where I live. Does that look good to you? No. So watch what I do. I get in the tree and I take this major cut, this big center, and in one cut I drop the thing 15 feet. And the tree looks, to, and then I do a few adjustments and the tree looks totally gorgeous, like I didn't do anything. And she says, I could do that. That makes sense. And I said, you know what happened? You were outside for 20 minutes in clean air at no cost and you watch the master and you have the confidence to do this because you saw how it was done. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm telling you, man, you watch the master, they explain it and you get it. I can do that. That's simple. Or if you're sitting in a dead, dead classroom, you're drinking coffee to stay awake, it's totally boring. You read this dead book. You're doing these tests and you're miserable. No connection. There's no connection to life. And it's all theory. And it has no impact. It's totally dead. It's just so like, really? <laughs> so true. Could you do me a favor? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open this gate. I'm going to have you go dump this. I, wa I, want you to, I want you to watch how these chickens so love live food. You just, just take it over there and right where that, that stuff is, just dump it out. Okay. Just straight over there. Just just flip it over and and watch them start coming to eat. Oh, wow. <laughs> Dinner bell. <laughs> 
Yeah, now, now this this is, now see, this is the most nutrient-dense food in the world my chick is eating. That for me was yard waste. Would be an irritant to have to chop up in a, in a, in a compost place to deal with. And this is, this is my chick is getting some amazing food right here. And you come back in a few hours, you won't see anything because they'll eat it all. Total recycle. Total recycle. Thank you so much. Yeah, GMO corn, to be specific. Yeah. yeah. See, my chickens right now, I want you to hear me, are eating food better than most of the people in the world eat. Really. I mean, those are the beets you guys just ate that they're eating. Yeah. And you know how much that cost me? You know what you pay for chicken food? It's expensive. You know what's sad about chicken food? It's all dead food. Because when you crack a grain, it dies. And all chicken food is cracked grain. And you're paying a fortune to feed your chickens dead food. It's so insane how we live. We don't think. We don't think. Now you see my willow tree there? That was planted intentionally to create a barrier and protection for my chickens from all the eagles and hawks because they can't get through it. And you see what I did underneath it? You see that tree growing underneath my, my willow tree, the fig tree? You know why it's there? Because when all my figs are gone, that one there gets right because it's in the shade, it's set, it's set back. And so I elongate my fig season by planting in the shade. This, it's, it's not cheating, it's asking God and paying attention and learning how to get cool things out of what would be to most people a negative. This is shade. But you plant your 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 your, your sun loving things in the shade to extend the harvest time. Mm -hmm. It's so cool. Mm -hmm. Yay God. I love God. He's awesome. Well, I guess this is where we come to an end. So if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer you. Otherwise I'm blessed you could see this and enjoy it and, and uh and, and, I, and I want you, I just want you know, I just want you to look around at these plants in here and just realize their health. This space, like my orchard, never has ever been watered, ever. Never. Ever. And just look at, look at the... Huh? What's that? St. John's. St. John's wort, yeah. Mm -hmm. And look at the calendula. I mean, everything, I mean, the, the strawberries. I mean, is there anything that doesn't look healthy? Oh, yeah. And I don't do anything. I, just, I want you to get no works, no water. And I don't, and I don't do anything. Just, they take care of themselves because the ground is supporting them. And that's how everything in nature operates. Mm. Well, how would you prune blueberries? Like everything. You prune open. open. You see this? See, that's a pruned blueberry. See the, how those are pruned? Mm -hmm. See how open they are? And look at the amount of berries on there. So, when do I prune them? When you feel like doing it. Oh. When it's convenient. Now, for me, the convenient time to prune my trees is in the, in the, in the winter when there's no leaves. Mm -hmm. Here's what's cool about winter. During the winter time, there's no lawn to mow, there's no garden to take care of, no weeds to pull, and all the leaves are out, so it's very convenient. I have time. But if something shows up during the summer that doesn't belong there, I go after it. Because I'm not contained, restricted at any time of year. I can do it any time I want, but it's all about convenience. Make it easy for yourself. You see, when it's convenient, it's fun. When you have to do it by this date, oh. it's a drag. It's miserable, like, really? I don't live like that. So this word of convenience is really significant to me. It's just like, it makes life so fun. Just do it when you want to, when you can, you know? And just, and it's just, it's just so cool, you get out here, you know, and you see, if you get in the inside, you, can, you, see, you start by getting all the stuff that crosses over, you open it up, and then you just start adjusting. And it's just, it's just so, it's an art form, and it's really enjoyable. It's not like just hacking and butchering and making something look bad. Is this a new blueberry? It's, it's, it's not that new, but it's, it's kind of new, but it, um, it's, it's... How do you, do you like just buy a new blueberry? Plant? Yeah, there's, there's, this, there's this nice, nice plate. I, I, I buy plants. There's this nice place called, um, it's an onelastic called um, Burnt Ridge Nursery, and they have a wonderful variety of blueberries. 
and they have one I want to get. It's supposed to grow eight feet. Oh. I'd love to have an eight-foot blueberry. That would be awesome. Where like, are they located? They're in Onalaska, Washington. How far away from you? I don't know. I haven't been there, but... I tried to order some Olympias, and they won't ship them. Who won't ship them? That place you told me to Because why won't they ship Olympia? I'm clear down in southern Oregon. I wonder why. Do they add, something they, about it would, call, it would uh, weigh 35 pounds, and they won't ship that big. It's bulky. And well, tell them they have smaller plants. I want smaller plants, so please ship it, because they do have smaller ones. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, don't, don't give up. Say, listen, I, I need those plants, because th those, if you look at those, those things are, that's, that's along the hedge there, yeah. and I've never seen a blueberry produce, start producing in, 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 in July, and uh, in October, when the wind blows, the ground's blue below. Mm -hmm. They last so long. It's just, I mean, they just keep coming and coming. Like yeah. This is an amazing variety. So just tell them, I want you to ship the size you can. Because I, I want, I want, yeah, I'll just call them up and, and get on the phone with them and say, I, I want you to ship what you can. And they can. Olympia. It's a most amazing variety. And it's very, very not well known. Not many people know about it. The only two, the only two people that, that carry it is, is um, Burnt Ridge and, and um, Rain Tree. Now, Rain Tree charges twice as much for them. Yeah, so I bought one of every. I read the label and I got one to take me all the way through to. Oh, I did the same thing. October, because mm -hmm. I'm yeah. selfish. <laughs> Blueberries are awesome food, and they'll produce for your whole life. They're just—they're a wonderful plant. Yeah. Yeah, really good. My raspberries are done too. I saw you had some. Yeah. <laughs> You're hotter there, though. Yeah, quite a bit hotter, so that's probably why. See, and I'm Southern Oregon. I'm struggling. Okay. I, I did this whole thing. In fact, he tells me a lot. I've called him several times, and he said, Patience, Bev. I hate that word. <laughs> <laughs> patience, patience, patience. But anyway, so I started praying for the wood chips, and um, I found this truck kind of behind a store, a feed mm -hmm. store, and so I called them, and he goes, Well... You know, we kind of work for PPNL, and maybe we'll bring you one or two. But they brought me nine massive ones. Awesome. So my prayer got answered. That was kind of cool. But I'm I'm hot down there. I think you answered my water. question. Water. I'm just not. It, it's, I think once my pear trees, we never water them <clears throat> because they were established before we bought mm -hmm. the place. I think once I get them established, you're good. I'll be fine. But mm -hmm. it's this little starting, yeah, because they don't have much of a root system. Right now. Yeah. But and we have wood chips. 19, yeah, water. Like number 19 inches thick. Yeah, that's you see the water's not getting to the ground. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's. And the, then we did the mistake of doing cardboard. I started changing to what you said, the painter's paper. I like that better. Yeah, it's oh, the much easier to work, the yeah, roll. Yeah, because it's, it's so with. quick to lay out, yeah, and it's and and it's thinner, and it breaks yeah, down quicker. It's a yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that better. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. See, cardboard's rigid. If you have dips, weasel grow. Where that paper, when it gets wet, lays tight to the ground and right. suffocates. So it just it yes. makes makes it work so much right. nicer. Mm -hmm. I can see it between the rows of the trees, mm -hmm. but around it, I, anyway, lesson learned. Mm -hmm. so but that, but you know, here's a, you see, our mistakes are real are one for learning tools. Mm -hmm. They teach us, yeah. and we need to see things in that light. It's not bad. You learn something, and so you're much better because of it. Right. You know, and so it's all good. Right. Yeah. And what about? Seeds, the ideal seeds is what you grow yourself until you get there. Fedco is a real good company. Um, Baker Creek Heirloom Seed. Now, um, but you know, I find major um, poor pollination. They, they don't, they're not, they're not good quality. I mean, very, you know a lot doesn't come up. I did, you said Baker, so I went home and did Baker. So I was trying to learn from the master. And what I did was I found a person on YouTube that takes a paper towel and puts like six or eight of Sprouts them. seeds and then they spray the paper towel and put it inside a Ziploc bag and every single one of mine, every single one of mine germinated. Sprouted. Yeah. And, so the, and, and, then, and then, and then you can, do, then you can just set them out and you got, yeah. you got plants. Yeah. yeah What's the seed exchange one that you use? I, I, I like, um, I like um, Fedco. Fed, I mean, Fedco is my favorite because they have the, the, the greatest variety. They do. They do carry some some um, hybrid. I don't. I don't mess with those. But they have a really good selection. And they're very, very generous and honest and just a cool company. I really like them. But the seed that I grow is the best because it's nutrient dense and they all come up. They're good. Yeah. I'm collecting my comfrey seeds right now. Yeah. Awesome. Where'd you um, find that? Baker Creek. What really? What kind of seeds? 
Comfrey. Out of Ireland. Oh, Comfrey. And it was the roots. Yeah, I got seeds and planted them in just okay. in a little ring. And, and Baker yeah. Creek, I, I, they also carry rice seed, I just found out. Really? Yeah, Baker Creek carries rice. Did you go to the spring planting this year at Baker Creek or not? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't go there, no. Oh, okay. No. no. I can't. Well, when's Too long to drive. Comfrey starts flowering. <laughs> oh, I know. No, it all went to seed, and I just today cut them all off and put them in my bag, my onions, and collecting those seeds. What did you to... just say about the flower with the comfrey? Well, well it'll you... put a flower head out. Yeah. Like, it's great for mulch, right? Yes. Like, yeah. chop drop and drop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, if you let it go to seed, it'll just take, take over. Oh, yeah. See, I, I, I grow comfrey in containers because if you put it in wood chips, you, you, you'll never yeah, stop it. Yeah, I know. I, 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 oh, good thing I know. Yeah, so mint, mint and comfrey I grow in containers because you can't stop it otherwise. Okay. One thing I can't stop is horsetails. Oh, yeah. yeah, horsetails, and you know why? Because it's such, it's such a tender root, it breaks off. You can't get the whole root out because it's such a tender plant. Are you ready to go? Well, that has been... Paul, thank you for your time. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Bless you. Thank you, thank you so, so much. much. Uh-huh. Come on, Paul, so it's. You'll be like... hearing from me. Okay, cool. <laughs> I always have to call It's you. fine. I'm good to hear from you. It seems like you're either doing wood chips or processing through the chickens and then bringing that back versus all the different varieties that you had spoken of. Um, on the it's fine tuning. Day. Yeah, no, I as you know, get I older, it, I as you get older, it. you learn what works good, you know. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. But that's that's you've sort of concluded. Yeah, it's easy. Yeah, you know, this keep is, it simple, you know. Yes. And and I used to do a lot of steps. I don't have to anymore because it's it's, it's, it's works better. So I'm, I'm always learning. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it's never you never end. Mm -hmm. This is cool. Mm -hmm. You always can improve, and so it's great. And a question for you on that note because I, I have an appreciation for the aesthetic of I don't want to see droppings all over yeah. my yard so is that mostly an aesthetic choice like where you won't for example break something off and just drop it because you know aesthetic. it's going to go back to earth yeah. I don't it's, like the look of it's it it's primarily aesthetic, aesthetic. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like order everything Me neat too. and clumps of brush and stuff that's dying this doesn't look good it doesn't. in a nice green place I agree and so to take it all here mm -hmm. and have them compost it let it turn back, turn back in that gorgeous black soil just makes more sense to me yeah. you know that pile of stuff there is okay here but my garden wouldn't look good right i totally yeah. agree yeah. yeah yeah i've been through that too and so it's just again it's just it's just how we're, we're all wired differently and some people, some people like cluttered and it's okay i don't and so it's just you know what works for one maybe for, not for another but it's okay yeah yeah no it's fantastic no i appreciate that i just didn't know if there was a a reason beyond just the look of it no just the look mm -hmm. but it is so beautiful and there's something it's order. Very aesthetic it's, it's about order. It. order. 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 Order exactly. is very, to me, very, very attractive. I found it very nice to be able to take all the different elements and put them together in a way that um, brings order. Looks nice. And yeah. brings life. Yeah. And, yeah. What you're explaining out there is, is, is just it's compounding interest. Yeah, exactly. All the soil mm -hmm. just keep turning it over and it keeps giving off more and more. Yeah. Not ending. Just <laughs> it's so good. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it. You're so welcome. Yeah, it's wonderful. I uh, drove up from Newport yesterday. I was visiting some friends and um, great drive up. Mm -hmm. Now I'm heading back down to L.A. Oh, well, you're gonna you're gonna go through all that fire. It was that's yeah. so scary that yeah. was happening in Reading. Such a bummer. I'm me. gonna check that out. I, I think I'm gonna go along the coast. Well, that's and, uh, much nicer ride. Yeah, it's much slower, nicer view. Much nicer. The view is view. awesome. Yeah, and much cooler. I'm looking forward to it. You know, I bought. Uh, I bought 10 acres out there with the intention of rebooting, mm -hmm. is what I call it. Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you yeah I came from L.A. I, yeah, I, 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 I rebooted. Yeah. No, I know. It's beautiful. <laughs> you, you know where Acton is at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My business is in Burbank, the foundation uh -huh. works, but yeah. I, I bought some land out in Acton. Mm -hmm. so, um, lots, lots, lots we can do there. Yeah. yeah. Well, I really, I, I think I taught you, it's, it's amazing what you are doing in your work. I mean, that's phenomenal. You know, you're really covering a lot of space, you know, you know, it's awesome. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, you were my original inspiration, and I, I've been following it, and now it's time to get down to the practical. Brother, we got to run. Okay. Thank you. Great seeing you. Thank you. I'm going to drop a little note in the mail to you with a picture. Oh, thank you. All right. Yeah. Cool. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you, thank you so for bringing for everything, for everything sharing. back to the, the, the creator, to our oh, Lord. thank you. And to his perfection. And to his goodness to everyone all the time. Thank you for doing that. Uh, Thank that you. I mean, all of this is amazing, mm -hmm. but that's 
uh, what I really admire you for. He's the best. You think? He's just, he's so good. We're, we're, we're in the winning kingdom. We're on the winning I know. side. Right? It's awesome. Blessings, man. Thank you. Bless, Thank you. You. Bless you. You know, it's funny what he just said inspired me. It's something you, you mentioned earlier. We're saying, I've never seen anything this big. And I, I got to tell you, it may be because you're showing everyone else what's possible. So what better place than the creator to use you as yeah. an example? So, you yeah. know what, Paul? I'm going to make these things really yeah. big. Like, no one's I, ever I, seen them because I can, this I can, is where everyone's coming to see I, I can, what can, I can be done. I can work so, with you. Yeah, so, I can work with you. So, <laughs> I, I kind of so, sense that's going on. Yeah, yeah no, it's, uh, it's, I laugh when I'm listening to you because it's like, oh, man, you've got this all figured out. But uh, you, you've got Look at how many figs are on there. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, it's so cool. See, I grew. I used to grow figs in California, but I, they, they don't grow here. But these are growing great. Yeah. yeah. Now I've got a, I've got a mission fig tree, black, black mission yeah. figs. Yeah. And um, the, uh, the little yard munchers have been getting most of them. Oh. Yeah. But um, I guess they've got to eat too. It's been a while, Paul, but we came here a while back. Uh huh. And actually, my mom was in town, so we wanted to oh, bring. Oh, great! Her out Wonderful. Here. Cool. Yeah. So. Oh. I was going to ask you, does your wife use the black cohosh? Yeah, she uses, she's a, she's a, she's a midwife, yeah, and she uses all these herbs in her practice instead of drugs. I know. Because they're so safe and so effective. They're awesome. so good. Because mm -hmm. I'm just like, here, I'm like, okay, that's midwife's, like, um, Materials, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she, you know, she, I mean, and, and, and she uses tinctures and, and, um, and, um, and, and, and essential oils, powerful. I mean, they, they work so good, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. So doctor's yeah. office, uh, Anna. Place to well, it's not a doctor's office, you know. Yeah. From, you know, yeah. people say, you know, they're not my patients; they're my clients. There's nothing wrong with them. They're not sick. <laughs> they're just having a baby, and I'm gonna help, help them have a healthy baby. You know? mm -hmm. And you are what you eat, so that she's really, she really, really focuses on their on their diet. Yeah. You make yeah. sure that exactly because it, exactly. it's so critical, you know, what you eat because you are what you eat. You know. Exactly. And she just rules out all complications and stuff just by teaching them how to eat right. It's, it's powerful. And she travels the world teaching. She's going to Greece this year I, to, te to teach this, like, you know, 1,500 midwives from all over the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and you know what's so cool about it? She has, she, has, she has no education. She has absolutely no formal education. She was taught by a midwife. She a, was an apprentice. I'm from the expert. My husband is a retired judge in Freetown, Sierra Leone, West Africa. Oh, wow. He just cool. started a farm. Uh -huh. But, you know, we have rainy season and dry season. Yeah. And he's growing rice. He's growing red rice. Mm-hmm. Um, he's growing tomatoes. I was so happy when you say because we eat tomatoes from the garden, yeah. we eat from the farm, and we eat awesome. our carrots. But my, my son has um, started a 50, 50 acre coconut plantation mm -hmm. there. And then he tried to introduce sweet potatoes. They have the white sweet potatoes, uh -huh. the red orange ones. But we have problems with bugs. You know, it's tropical. Mm -hmm. So we've been battling with. Our, but our, bugs, mm -hmm. bugs are an indication of unhealthy plants, not tropics. Oh. Mm. Well, just, you know, from, from a medical perspective. Mm -hmm. All disease is a result of malnutrition, all of it. Hmm. If you ha are properly nurtured, you can't get sick. And the same is true with plants. Mm -hmm. And so when you have a disease issue, it's because the plant's not well. Bugs will never, you see, none of my produce has any bug bites because it's so full of water. When they bite into it, they drown. Those plants where you are are dehydrated. They're not well, and that's why the bugs are taking them out. So if you got wood chips, you held water, and you hydrated, bugs would leave. Because that's what he was trying, brewer's yeast, um, um, poultry waste, but like you say, it has the, the ammonia smell in the yeah. poultry waste, mm -hmm. the chicken waste. But you see here, I mean, this holds water. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, look at this. this. This is summer. This is, we've had no rain. Look, 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 it's getting wet. It's getting wet. That's wet there. That's wet. That ground's wet. See, he has, a, he has a spring that comes up from the ground, but it dried down during the dry season. Mm -hmm. but yeah, this, this, this material is... holds water like nothing else. And let, let me explain why. This is, you see my sequoia trees over here? You see how dark green that foliage is. And I want you to, to follow my line of reasoning. How's the water, which is very heavy, get lifted from the ground all the way to the top of that tree and out to the end of all those branches with no pump? Are you hearing me? Water's heavy. Mm -hmm. It's going against gravity. It's being lifted and carried out to the ends of all those branches with no pump. How does that happen? Capillary action in wood cells. Yeah. Now follow me. 
This is the same wood cells that's moving all that water up that tree. And it knows how to hold, transport, and release water better than anything on the planet. Are you following me? So we plant, we plant generators and pumps and panels yeah. and everything. Yeah, to get water. when this <laughs> does it the best. Wow. And it's all free with yeah, no work. We can do that. We can get that. But I, I just want you to start paying attention to the demonstration in nature because it's so powerful. God made it so simple, so totally awesome. And we don't look, we don't pay attention. And we do all this hard stuff that's toxic and expensive. It doesn't work. It I'm telling you, this is so awesome, God. Well, we don't we don't grow mushrooms there. I'm a vegetarian. If you if you so, if you plant if you put this stuff, you'll have mushrooms. Okay, so that's what the next question. Because I wanted I, for my B12, I wanted to start growing mushrooms. Let me tell you something about wood chips that nothing else has. Mm -hmm. Fungi. Mm -hmm. See all your manures, all your grass clippings, all your leaves, all your fertilizers have no fungi. Wood products have fungi. Mm -hmm. And that is the most potent, amazing life force of the soil. Mm -hmm. And you put this stuff down, mushrooms just start growing because it's fungi. Mm -hmm. It's where they live. You know, it's, it, to me, it's, it's so powerful how God made it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it's the best. It's so you can't improve on God. Yeah. He's just, he's the ultimate. He's the master gardener of the universe. Nice. The master, get it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did Adam and Eve in a garden? Yeah. Good. Perfect. To know him. That was for a reason. Mm -hmm. yes. and, and you know where we're going to all end up? In a garden. In a garden. In a garden. I love the wording yeah. there in Micah chapter in new, 4. And movement. everyone will be under their own vine, under their own fig tree, because God did not have plan B. Did you hear me? <laughs> he didn't have plan B. He's going back to the original because it's the best. Yes. And, he, and it's not like he's a learner. He's practicing. He knows what he's doing. And he did it right up front, and he doesn't change. So I tell people, well, I'll be doing this for the next thousand years. I'm just getting in gear to my future, man. This is, exactly. this is what we'll all be doing, man. So I'm, I'm getting geared up for it. You know? <laughs> Appreciate it. You're so welcome. Thank you. Capillary. Capillary. You know something else they show about wood that's powerful? Hey, have you ever been in a house with a wood stove? You know how that heat is different than any other source of heat. No electricity, yeah. no propane, no gas will ever do that. And you notice what you're feeling right now from the sun? It's the same heat. The same as that wood stove because it's thermal. It goes right through your body into your tissues. And here's what God has showed me. He says the trees right now are taking photosynthesis of the sun and they're storing it in their cells. And when it's burned, they give it back. It's the same heat that came from the sun. And trees are renewable. Nothing else is. I mean, God did it perfect. He did it the best. The, I mean, nothing gets better. It's the ultimate. What is that noise? What's that? that? That's a bird? That's a raven. A raven? Is that what he's doing? A raven. He's going, <laughs> See, the ravens are not happy because they know what's here. And they want it. And I, and I demonstrated to them that they're not welcome. This is unsafe because I, I killed one and hang it, hung up in the air so they could see it. Oh, nice. mm -hmm. so they that is the most powerful, the most powerful scarecrow is a dead one hanging in the air. <laughs> I, I, I did. I, I had, a, I had a, 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 a PVAC thing out there. I had this crow up hanging up in the air. And I tell you, man, they don't come here anymore because they know this is not a safe place to, to come. Yeah, don't, don't go there. Good. You don't want to do this. You know, and they're, and they're angry because they know about all this food. And they know it's good. And they want it, but they just, they're smart enough to know that if I go up there, I can get killed. You know, so I don't want to risk it. Not that good. Yeah. Because scarecrows are, are, are stupid because crows are smart. They know that's not real. But when they see a dead one, they are, they get like, that's real. I use owls and I try to move them around. They're smart. The mm -hmm. crows are very smart. They know. And so are, the, so are other birds. You know, how to keep, you know how you keep cherries in your tree? The birds not getting them? You kill garden snakes and hang them in the tree. The plastic ones they know are plastic. Right. When they see a real one, yeah. they back out. They don't go into that tree. They work very well. There's snakes in the tree. Oh, that's smart. Live ones. I mean, you know, you kill them, but they're, they're real snakes. 
Yeah, my plastic yeah. owls don't yeah. want yeah. that. Okay. We need Oh, God thank you. you. Bless it was, you. It was wonderful. Well, I'm appreciate so glad it. I came. Thank you. Bless you. I like your garden, too. It's I'm really so glad nice. you could come and enjoy my garden. That's <laughs> yes. so great. Thank you so much. Bless you. Nice to meet you, Paul. Nice meeting May you. God bless you. You too. You're doing a wonderful job. Oh, thank you. And my daughter will learn from you. Yeah. All right. She's the master for us. Awesome. <laughs> Good for you. Great. Yes, thank you very much. Us too. We have, have to go, day. Paul. Okay. But thank you so much. You're so welcome. It's been so great. So good to have you. Excellent. All right. I hope you come back soon. Cool. Maybe you need an apprentice someday? <laughs> well, I always, you know, there's a woman coming here from Israel um, next month to learn from me. People come from all over the world to learn, you know, and I, I love sharing. All right. All right. So. Well, I'll be looking at you on YouTube. Contact. What's that? <laughs> I said, I'll be, I'm on YouTube. Yeah. Well, I, you know, um, that nub tells me, you know, doing pruning, I show people how to prune it. <laughs> See, pruning is an art form, and there's only one culture in the world who knows how to do it. Japanese. The Japanese. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm serious. Yeah. And, and, and here's why. All cultures prune from the outside in. They start hacking ends off. Mm -hmm. The Japanese prune from the inside out. It makes such a difference. It's really significant. Inside out. Mm -hmm. And how does the Creator deal with us? From the inside out. I love these principles you see everywhere in nature because they're all the, they're all the same. All the spiritual lessons. Yeah, I see everything. I see it. God, God made things so ordered. He's not complicated. He made things so ordered. And you see these principles are in everything. It's so awesome. Yay, God. Do coconut shreds work also for here's Here's the word. Here's the word. From dust we came, from dust we turn. Everything God made turns back to dirt. Everything. So no matter what you have, will turn back to dirt, which is a positive. Everything. I love God. Mm -hmm. See, He made no nothing was wasted in His environment. Nothing's wasted. Everything's returned, and creates life. Everything. Nothing's toxic. Nothing's wasted. It's such a great design. Where in our culture, everything's toxic. Everything's wasted. And you have landfills. And you have methane. You have all these amazing, sickening disorder. You know. This on the lawn. Oh. I don't know if they're going to call about okay. it. Okay. Thank you for giving, bringing it back. I'll, sure. I'll hold on to it. Sure. Thank Thanks so much. So, why is the basil okay. inside the. Because it's not warm enough here for it to grow good outside. Okay. And so the glass on the sides hold the heat in. I have the top out because I want to get direct sunlight so I have nutrient density. But the glass on the sides make it warmer. And See, it grows up fast in rainy season in Sierra Leone, but then dry season. But that's, that's, I'm in the dry season, it's not disappearing. Because yeah, we, 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 we have 90 degrees year round. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, but, the, so just plant it often. Yeah. And, and get some wood chips. Yeah. See, so the, see, the wood chips make it, make it hold the water mm -hmm. and just, I mean, there's just such an asset to the, to the environment. You know, and, and, they, and, they, and they take up, the, they absorb the heat. It's like, it's like a major cushion, you know, in, in, in life for the plant. Well, the thing is, first I think that the but basil I mean, is in a smaller like container, and and it needs more because sun. Because we, the last time we came out to Paul, I started doing it at home, and it did yield results. But like, I want to actually be able to put it more in land. Here's the problem with your basil. You you bought it in a store that was already started, so it was poor soil, fed chemical fertilizers, and it was weak. Okay. If you start that basil yourself in good soil, it'll be altogether different. You see, they are what you are what you eat, and they they were fed chemical fertilizers. They were grown in in vermiculite, perlite, and peat moss, which is sterile. They were kept inside under light, all unnatural. And when you put them outside in the real world, they're weak, and they can't handle it. Makes sense. Yeah, I'm I'm serious. They're not strong because they were weakened by their culture. Where if you plant that thing in good soil, you feed it good water, you bring it outside, it's gonna take off. It's gonna thrive. My older brother, he has land, and uh, yeah. I, I, my brother would ask you straight questions, so it would be a, it'd be a good question. Well, let me tell you, let, let me tell you about about what I'm doing here, and this is why this this so destroys the stupid concept of missionaries going to foreign countries and building churches. That's so this this guy. When you come you come to a land. You get to know the people and you say, let me show you how to grow food like God does. And you start showing them how to grow food. 
everything about the gospels right here. Yes. Yes. You don't need a building. Uh -huh. You can just show them and you're blessing them, you're, you're empowering them, you're teaching them how to be successful and use their land. Yes. That's the gospel. It's not in a sterile building sitting in chairs looking at some one guy talking. It's connecting them to life. And that's why God put us in the garden was to know him. So you're sending me a missionary now, you know that, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I love it. And people come here from all over the world and I, I get agnostics, I get atheists, I get new agers. You know what's awesome? The, every one of them acknowledge and recognize the, the, the peace that's here. You can't deny it. And I tell them who it is. His first name is Yeshua and his second name is Prince of Peace. And he likes hanging out here. He's very welcome here. And they can't deny the evidence. I don't care where they're coming from worldview. It's evidence. He's tangible. He's you know, accessible. He's here. And it's awesome. <laughs> Both me, so she's leaving in a few days, Washington. So no, I, t I also teach uh, medical missionaries. So then the, we just started with um, natural laws of health, God's law, mm -hmm. laws of health, sunshine, water, exercise. Amen. But the next thing now is to get them into. Now I want to know how to get them into gardening. gardening. <laughs> but well, you, you, you take them to Genesis and you show that's where it all began, mm -hmm. and you bring them to the reality. You can't, you know. I, I love the scripture. It says, "With food and clothing." Two things, food being the first of the list, there with be content. God's basically saying all you need is life, in life is food, clothing, shelter. That's all you need. Everything else the Western world's telling you you need is a lie. Mm -hmm. It's a lie. And it causes major clutter, pollution to the earth, and nobody's happy. Well, when you're outside in the garden, you're eating this nutrient-dense food, you'll watch this stuff grow. You're just blessed. Mm -hmm. You're in health. You feel good. And you realize, this is what I'm here for. This is real. This is tangible. This is so good. Thank you, God. All that other garbage we have never satisfies. It can't. It's, I love God with food and clothing. There with be content. That's all you need. Everything else is extra. The basics. The basics. And it's simple, easy. And it's good. My husband's a retired judge and he says, they said, you have farming? He said, yes. He said, I wouldn't trade it for anything. So they were laughing. You went from the courthouse uh -huh. to the farm. Now they all come to him now for his food. Yeah. They all come. Yeah. Because you can't live without food. Yeah. And you the quality can, and the freshness. Amen. There. You can have a million dollars in your wall. You have no food. You're going to die. <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. You die rich. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You're going <laughs> to die. Yeah, exactly. Because you have to have food. And I tell people, you know, Bill Gates just lives over the water here for me in Lake Washington. Mm. Bill Gates isn't eating food this good. Mm -hmm. With his billions of dollars, even if he found someone that grew it this well, by the time it gets to him, it's wilted. Mm -hmm. It's not this good. I'm living at a quality of life Bill Gates doesn't approach. Mm -hmm. I love my Bill father. Gates got nothing on you, Paul. My father is awesome. <laughs> he is an awesome father. He provides for me the best. Mm -hmm. The total best. Mm -hmm. It's so, awesome. So why are those trees bent, bent like that? Because oh. I read the first chapter of Genesis. <laughs> where God told me what I was made for. I created you to have dominion over my planet. Wow. And you see those trees? Look at the height of my, my hand right here. Mm -hmm. You see, this is the height of my trees. Uh -huh. When they got that tall, I pruned to a branch going out because I'm not using a ladder. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna serve me. And if you look at my trees, they all look like they're bowing over and they're humble. <laughs> Are you getting it? <laughs> they look like they're under my dominion because they are. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's significant. It's real. So you can really read the Bible just looking at your garden. Wow. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm doing my best to follow the instructions. Yeah. We were given an owner's manual for a reason. We need help. Yeah. And it's given us very clear instructions. And you should follow them because they work. Everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. I love it. And you see, this is what's so fun about this. That's why you don't need a church. You just go outside because God's all over the place. Mm -hmm. he, the gospel's everywhere. Mm -hmm. and, and, it's, and it's so tangible. It's so much better than this stupid building, mm -hmm. you know, because it's real. Okay, um, I'm going to get in my... I have a, my project is, what is it? I want to do the sweet potatoes and probably do some herbs. 
but I've been struggling with um, um, neck and vertebrae, cervical problems. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I need to exercise. I need to get out more. Mm -hmm. Get in the sun. Yeah, more. and movement is so is so yeah. is so important. So and life food. and life food. Yeah. That's well, let me tell you something about 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 life food. Mm -hmm. You know, my wife is a she's a prophet she's a seer she's very direct and she bought this book which really lined up with the character the title was alkalinize or die alkalinize or die was the title of the book yeah that's, my son, my that's, brother has that that's pretty direct yeah. mm -hmm. that man made a statement that changed my life he said all pain and all disease comes from an acid condition in your body mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so i told carol I says you know i got a lot of pain my legs my back i was in pain all the time he says you know i can test that so I came home and I ate nothing from the store. I ate everything in the season I grew here and all the pain totally left. And what was awesome, how God validated it to me, I'm, I'm over in Seattle one day with one of her friends who says, oh, there's this awesome Chinese restaurant. You gotta come with us. I mean, it's so good. And so I went, not realizing what I'm doing. <laughs> the next morning, all the, all the pain was back. And I totally connected the dots. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. I get it. Mm -hmm. And it's, I've been pain-free for 24 years. It is so fun to be pain-free. I love God because nutrient-dense food in season alkalinizes your body and pain can't live there. You said dense food. Nutrient-dense. Nutrient-dense food in season. In season. That's God's order. And again, if you look at nature, here's what I, I tell people. Is, you know, all the animals in nature, you see, we're in the classification of mammals. All the mammals in nature carry no health insurance go to no doctors, they have no refrigerators, no stoves, they go to no stores, and they live long, healthy, disease-free lives. Why? Because they eat food fresh in season where they live. Nothing's imported. Are you following me? Yeah, yeah. That's, 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 that's pay, I'm just telling you, pay attention. They're mammals. They're just like us. And they never get sick. They take no drugs. They go to no doctors. They have no refrigerator, no stove. And they just live well and don't get sick. Well, we do all this stuff yeah. and get sick. And I'm telling you, if we're paying attention, my people perish, the word says, for lack of knowledge. We're not paying attention. That's your dog. That's... Yeah. So what, do you, what does the dog eat? The dog eats carrots, beets, Kale, all my fruits. I fed him a carrot earlier. Did she, you? So really? My dog, my dog is a vegetarian. <laughs> well, see, that's what my husband keeps saying. Dogs are not vegetarians, and my and our dog was so pitiful. Oh. So tell I your dad that. Tell your husband this, mm -hmm. and this is the word. Mm -hmm. I asked God about this whole issue of meat, and He showed me where it all started. You see, God is love. That's His essence. God is love. Love would never kill an innocent animal to provide food for someone else. Love wouldn't do that. And he showed me the first time an animal was killed was when man sinned because after the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. So God killed an innocent animal to make a covering for their sin. But it was never his intent. Now, when Jesus comes back in the millennium for the next thousand years and says in Acts chapter 3, he's going to restore everything as it was in the beginning. In the millennium, even the predators of nature will not eat meat because the lion is going to lie down with the lamb. And you're going to get, it was never God's intent ever to eat meat. Mm -hmm. That came after the fall. And if you look at the, at the statistics, the, the lifespan of the human race prior to the fall was 933 years, average, yes. 9, 9, 930. Mm -hmm. After the flood, eating meat went down to 120. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I always tell people, Connect the dots. God, God gave you meat. To shorten your miserable life. life. And if you read... I want to get about the dog, though. He eats the raw... My dog eats everything out of my garden. No, the only, th only thing she eats is not vegan is eggs, because I give her eggs and she likes those. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, she's a vegan. She eats nothing but live food in my garden. And you don't cook it. You, you no, they raw. pick it themselves. She pulls the carrots. And they, they, she picks the pears. They, eat the, they, they, they know how to eat. And what's so cool is you see your poor dog waits for you to give him this dead food yeah. in a container yeah. twice a day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my dog, whenever it's hungry, just walks out in the garden and eats wow. because <laughs> it's convenient. Yeah. And they have such an enjoyable, good life. But I just, I'm just, if you look at, here, here's, here's the reality. Dog food did not exist till the Industrial Revolution. You know the Bible talks about dog food? The Bible discusses dog food. 
Really. Let me share, share it with you. Jesus has taken a vacation with the disciples. They've been very busy and they want a break. So they go to Syrophoenicia to get away from the Jews. So they can have a break. So the Syrophoenician woman comes up to him with a demon-possessed daughter and says, um, Jesus, would you heal my daughter? And Jesus says, listen, I was sent to the, to the Israelites. I can't do this. And she said this. You see, the Israelites re referred to the Samaritans as dogs because they're half-breeds. They're half-Jewish and half-Gentile. And they call them dogs. Mm -hmm. And she makes a statement, but Jesus, the little dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the table. My daughter is a little dog from a Jewish perspective. Mm -hmm. But she eats, and Jesus saw that faith and healed her. Mm -hmm. But that was reality. Dogs ate what was left over, what mm -hmm. fell from the table. Mm -hmm. That was dog food. food yeah. The normal food you ate, they ate. What fell from the table, they got. That's dog food. Mm -hmm. The Bible talks about dog food. Because that's how it always was. So and if you look at dogs today, they have cancer like we do. I'm going to give Susie vegetarian now. Because dogs eat the same kind of food we do. They have cancer now. Yeah. Paul, do you, do you have beets? Yeah. Oh, man. You weren't here in the beginning. On your way out. Okay. On your way out. Was... Were you parked? Yeah. <laughs> if you go to the end of my garden, mm -hmm. you'll see a whole bed of beets. And I want you to pull them. And eat them, you'll blow your mind. One, how so, big? So we, we don't grow beets over there. So how? What do they need to? You, you can grow in a tropical. You can grow beets anywhere. Yeah. Here's here's what I'm seeing. You see this black cohosh? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That only grows in full shade. Yeah, it came when you were talking. Are about you that. are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. I mean, a, a a naturopathic doctor was here last last week. Mm -hmm who travels the United States going to Urgard because she uses those in her practice and she's just totally blown away at how poor quality they are. Mm -hmm. They're terrible quality. And she says, I have never, ever seen black cohosh like this, ever. Mm -hmm. It's never this big or this healthy. She's blown away. And she's going to herb farms that do this for a living mm -hmm. and nothing even approaches it. I'm just telling you, man, God made everything good. He doesn't have limitation. And the word can't is not part of his vocabulary. Mm -hmm. And we need to get it. We need to understand who our Father is and start walking in faith because that pleases him. And just say, God, where, where, where should I plant this? How should I do this? Is follow the instructions and go for it and be blessed because all the stuff you were told are lies. Mm -hmm. All of them. So this would be a good faith practice. For you know what's interesting about this woman? Mm -hmm. She's a believer. You know why she was here? The naturopath you're talking about? Yeah, she's a believer. Okay. And she's crying out to God, God, I can't with a clear conscience be giving this stuff to my clients because it's not good. It's not good How can I get good food? Good. God told her, you're going to have to grow it. God mm -hmm. told her, you're going to grow it. And so she's crying out to him, God, I don't know how to grow stuff. So this prophet comes up to her. Prophet tells her, you need to find a master at growing food and have him mentor you. So she gets on the internet. And she finds me, and she drove all the way out from, from um, um, South, South Carolina to come here so I can mentor her. I'm just, I'm telling you, man, God is, God is totally on this big time. Oh, brought me from West Africa, so. Yeah. You know who was here, you know who was here yesterday? I thought, I, I thought coming from no. L.A. was a long way. But you know, you know who was here yesterday? <laughs> a couple from, from um, Kenya. Okay. Wow, and they are farmers, Kenya. Yeah, yeah this, this, there's a couple here yesterday from Kenya. And then, and then the day before, someone came from Norway. Mm. And a woman's coming here shortly from Japan, a, a husband and wife. Mm. I mean, people are coming here from all over the world. I love it. I love you know what? So you don't really have to go with the gospel of God. You, they, they come they to you. Can I, tell you can, I, can I tell you how fun it is to work with God? You're going to love this. You know how I qualify to get used? You know how I qualify to get used by God? God uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. That's how I qualify. Because to the world, I'm totally foolish. I have no education. I've been to no schooling. I'm a recluse. I go nowhere. I know no one. I have no cell phone. I have no computer. And God put me in a position to impact the world. I love Him. It's so totally outside the box. It's, it completely confuses the natural mind. And it's so fun because I don't have to do anything. And then after someone spends $60,000 to make this film, someone comes here and writes a book for me. For him. For yeah, him. He, he wrote a biography for me. Uh -huh. yeah. 
and now so it's sold. And now it's sold out. It's, it's on. It's on. Um, on eBay. Mm-hmm. And, um, um, Amazon. Amazon. Mm-hmm. And people just and it's, and it's doing another edition. And it's one one group that, that services home schools is going to buy a thousand copies to sell to home schools to you know, parents. Yeah, I'm a I'm, Amazon fan. I'm just telling you, man. God makes it so easy. I didn't even imagine this. Mm-hmm. I didn't even ask for it. And he just did it all. And it's so fun. I get so blessed. I get to do this every Sunday. And people just get to come from all over the world. And you know what's so hilarious? My wife is, you should see her. She's a prophetess. She's, she, I love my wife because she sees. And for years she's been telling me, you know, God, you know, Paul's gonna, God's going to find you. You're a recluse. But God's going to find you. <laughs> and you know what's hilarious? She's in China. She's in, in, in Siberia. She's in Israel. All over the world. Mm-hmm. And people know me. And okay. she, she says, and she tell, I told you, God's going to find Everywhere I go, they know you. They know you. And I says, I told you, God's going to find you. <laughs> so she goes with your credentials. She travels because she's a teacher. She's, she's, I mean, this is just what God has done with her. She's very direct. The government in China paid her to come to teach their doctors how to deliver babies. Their doctors, MDs. And she's an untrained midwife. No schooling. So she's going there. She's using her PowerPoint. She's showing her these doctors how she does birth. These doctors are flipping out. Says, Carol, can you show us how to do that? Because it's so easy. You see, doctors are trained to deal with complications and intervention. Mm-hmm. They don't know the natural. Mm-hmm. So she says, well, take me to the hospital. And so she goes to the hospital and she's just angry. She says, got these poor women tied to these stories. Get her off that table. That's no mm-hmm. place to have a baby. Mm-hmm. So she's got these women squatting. They're giving, and these babies, they're hugging. They can't believe this amazing, simple births. And so this one baby comes out with a cord on it. The doctor's all going, get the water ready. And so Carol says, stop that. You're scaring the woman. Just step back and watch. Here she's a foreigner in their hospital. She totally takes charge because she knows who she is. Mm-hmm. And she's just not, she says, step back. Get out of my way. My Let me show you how to do this. I was born in Sierra Leone by a midwife. Although there were doctors there, but fortunately the doctor didn't make it to the hospital in time. He was born natural birth. Yeah. The second son was born here in the U.S., Caesarean. Oh, it's evil. Yeah. It's evil. And so she just very naturally took the cord over the head, over the shoulders, and put the baby on the mom's stomach. These doctors stand in the mouth. We never knew you could do that. <laughs> because they're never trained to deal with the natural. Mm-hmm. They're only trained to deal with complications and interventions. They don't know the natural. Mm-hmm. And it totally blew their mind. You yeah, know? They tell them if you, anything goes wrong, they're going to sue you. Yeah. Said, so they immediately... They freak out and do cesarean. Mm-hmm. And you know what's, you know what's so, so evil about cesarean? This is so powerful how God made the, the human body. As the baby is growing in the mother's womb, it has no gut flora. Mm-hmm. It's not there. It doesn't exist in the baby's body. As the baby is coming down the mother's birth canal, the fluid in the birth canal, the baby takes in through its mouth and that seeds and begins the gut flora. Mm. As a baby is breastfed, that feeds it, mm-hmm. continues it. Mm-hmm. So babies born by cesarean have Gross. no gut flora. Wow. And you wonder why all these babies have allergies, mm-hmm, they're all mm-hmm, sick? Mm-hmm. Because they were born by cesarean and never had gut flora mm-hmm. put into their bodies. Wow. Oh, wow. God, I'm telling you, God made things so, so perfect, mm. so totally perfect. And any part you intervene and mess with, is a major, major conflict and That's negative. That's why you ask him, rather Always. than asking the experts. Because he knows everything. everything. You know what the Bible tells us? You have not because you don't ask. God, he, he made it so simple. And he says, call to me, I'll answer you, show you great my things. You know, in all your ways, acknowledge me. I mean, it's all over the book. My people hear my voice and nobody asks. <laughs> well, I, 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 I saw a little of your video on I mean, YouTube yesterday. Um, I'm just happy to be here. And I, and I promise you that there will be fruits from what you said when I go back. Oh, thank you, God. Mm-hmm. And you're going to so love it because God is so faithful to His Word. Yeah, no, I really believe that. He's faithful. That you just confirm it. Yeah. And give me more uh, courage. Yeah, to, to do like it. You say, listen. And, and um, share. Comp- take confidence that He does have a better way. Even though we may not know and, it. And, and, and to me, this is such a demonstration to share the gospel. Because mm-hmm. I don't care where you're coming from. I had this woman come from Norway who introduced herself as an atheist. She came all the way from Norway. I love it, you know. And so I always tell people, well, that's cool. You'll, we'll have a good time today. She didn't leave till 9 o'clock that night because she could not take her, herself away from God's goodness. And I kept telling her all day long, all day long God's going to get you. Well, see, you were telling her the truth. Yeah. yeah. And, and she was getting it. Yeah, and she's experiencing, and she, and she couldn't resist it. Yeah. And I says, God's going to get you. <laughs> 
you're just being drawn drawn to his goodness. It's all he's all over the place. You know, I love it, man. It's just like what is that, what is that over there? That those cur that petal that's on the ground in front of the lavender. That's um, it's su it's some herb. There's a lot here I don't know. My wife that uses all these for in her practice and somebody I don't know what okay. they are. But they're all they're all medicinal herbs. So this, I, this one here is one I, I just don't know what it is. But. Because I have a book of I sell books of herb books, but all of them. We don't have them there. We don't mm -hmm. have all the herbs. So when I have a chance to but, see But them, when you I start growing stuff and you start connecting with your father, you're going to find that there's no cancer with God. <laughs> I'm just, I mean, this is, the book says, grow in full shade. This is south-facing full sun. This is the exact opposite. Totally thriving. I love God. And here's the word that comes to me. He calls those things that are not as though they are. I love that. God calls those things in the book as though they aren't. I love him. He's the best. <laughs> and so there's just no, no limitation in God. You just do whatever he leads you to do and just have faith. It's going to work because he's above it all. And, and you see, this is such a demonstration to the world. I mean, all these unbelievers can't deny this. Mm -hmm. They can't deny what I'm saying because they know what the book says. And they have this evidence in the face that shows... God's real? I'll be 66 this week, so you've given me another lease on life. Yeah, God. Yeah, God. <laughs> Amen. So I can see what, Amen. I, what I need to be doing. Exactly. A vision. Mm -hmm. See, the word says, without vision, people perish. God just gave you vision right now. And you have a vision to fly. And you're going to do it in the Spirit. Thank you very much. Oh, you're so welcome. Bless you. Bless you. Do you mind if I offer you a suggestion? Mm -hmm. If I may, Paul? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course. Um, I came across uh, Paul almost five years ago now uh, on a YouTube video. I own a construction company in Los Angeles, uh -huh. and we're uh -huh. blessed to be about 100 people, pretty good-sized company. Uh -huh. What I found was, if you don't mind, I let Paul do the heavy lifting when I'm trying to get someone to understand this message mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because the girls did such a good job really capturing your essence and your passion of what's going on here mm -hmm. when i tried to do that myself i realized i was woefully inadequate mm -hmm. to get someone to understand what i was even talking about mm -hmm. in what this guy is a master at mm -hmm. which is why when you look him up in the dictionary under master oh, awesome. there he is mm -hmm. send people to my recommendation the video mm -hmm. the back to eden itself because if they get that then the rest can flow mm -hmm. and then you can have a conversation but i always let you do the heavy lifting yeah, thank you and i've got and I think that, hundreds no. of my customers have mm -hmm. plugged in because mm -hmm. i just did that mm -hmm. and i let you do all the work mm -hmm. that's already been created yeah, yeah no yeah. Well, like for them when i have I'm a meeting I, I just want i definitely am, they're going to see him of course they're probably mm -hmm. so and, and you know what uh, you know, i don't have the internet but people tell me <laughs> if you type in my name any technology that gives you everything can also i'm everywhere you are, it's yeah. just You're like it's, it's, it's like yeah, it's, it's like <laughs> and you know what's so hilarious mm -hmm. i did none of it i know it's great. i got nothing to do with this yeah. i didn't do this <laughs> Because, you're in the right because place. God, God's awesome. Like I say, He's so fun to work with. Yeah. He does all the work. Yeah. Yeah. And He's so effective. He's really, it's really quite capable. Cheating. It it's is almost, almost cheating, I know. But it's not. <laughs> but it, because it's so fun. It's yeah. just like, ah, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Very inspiring. Yeah. Okay, so we're headed out. Well, bless you. Thanks for coming. Thank you very and I just, I, and I just want to encourage you mm -hmm. that, that you had a, a God encounter today. And he's going to really, he's going to really bless you, and this is going to really multiply in your life. So you're a prophet too, huh? I'm just a seer. <laughs> I just, I, I can't be blind. I know today was not a coincidence. And here's the scripture: Everyone knows Second Second Corinthians five seventeen. Therefore, if any man will be in Christ, a new creation. Old things have passed away; they will always become new. What's the next statement? That's crazy. Actually, I've been in that chapter, and I just went blank. You know why you went blank? Because that statement is so powerful, Satan doesn't want you to get it. Because when you get it, it changes your life. That's 2 Corinthians 5.17. The next statement is, And now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself to Jesus Christ and given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Yeah. When you get in your spirit that all things are of God, it changes your whole view of life. To the believer, there's no such thing as a coincidence, an accident. Mm -hmm. All, things are, All right. things are of God. And when you start getting that, that totally changes how you view life. God, this may look bad, but you're in it, and you're working all things together for good, and so I'm believing you're up to something good. It changes everything. There's no coincidence. Why am I here? This is of God. 
All things are of God. You are here because of God. This is because of God. All things are of God. Yeah. Thank you. It's huge. That is true. That is <laughs> it's huge. I had to sit down now. Oh, for your neck? Yeah. yeah. Wow. I do I did well to stand up this long. But anyway, thank you very much. And we will be watching you, even though you will not see me, but I'll be watching you. Okay. And again, and again, but but what I want to encourage you, mm -hmm. you were given the Holy Spirit that Jesus said will lead you into all truth. Mm -hmm. So as you're in the garden, you're contemplating things, you say, Father, how would you approach this? What would you do here? And you listen mm -hmm. to what he shows you. It's huge. It's so huge. And he tells you right up front, you have not because you don't ask. He just wants us to ask. You know, he's, he's, so, he's such a father. He, he will never overstep us. Mm -hmm. Free will. He free will. He, and he, he gives us free choice. And if we don't ask, he won't tell us. Yeah, won't that's, tell been, us. that's been amazing to me that, that he actually can see you struggling. And not change. Watch you there. And not do anything because he, he honors yes. free moral agency. Yeah. Well, as soon as you he, say, ask him, then... It's like he says, I've been wanting to help you. I wish you'd ask sooner. Yeah. You have not because you asked. Ask, the word says it so plainly. Yeah. Yeah. And what's so incredible, we read that yeah. and we don't get it. Yeah. And what I find is, you know, a father, you know, if, if you have children, you guys have children? I do not. Do you have children? Mm -hmm. So your kids come and ask a question, you stop whatever you're doing, you pour it because you're so glad they ask. You want to give to them. Mm -hmm. That's just a natural father's heart. And our father is the same way. He loves it when we ask. I find that he says, and can I show you this? He just enjoys. And did you notice this? I mean, he it just loves that I asked. Because he's a father. It's just, and, and we so deprive him of relationship when we don't ask. Can you imagine how you'd feel if someone would go to some jerk and ask him stuff when he, your kids, instead of asking you? You feel, you feel like put down. Mm -hmm. I'm sure God feels that way. When we go to, when we go to scientists mm -hmm. and counselors, mm -hmm. The internet. Oh, the, that <laughs> has to has to hurt the part of the father. That has to hurt his heart. No offense. Are you hearing me? Because he knows it all, and he wants it. And we went there. We had access to him. Oh, that's why he sends us to you, and then you tell us go to him. Yeah. Because I get it. I know where it all is. It's all there. It's the best. Well, that's all I have for this video. Bang around that bell icon if you want to be notified when new videos come out. Call us on the hotline if you have comments or questions and want to be featured in an upcoming video. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe. Check us out on the website and we'll see you guys on the next one.